Hello everybody! Welcome back! Enrico speaking from the beautiful solar space in Turin, Reply Headquarter, the new, yeah, the brand new Reply Headquarter here in Turin, Italy. We are live, it's 8 and 32 minutes right now and we are happy to start it together with all of you, the finals of the Reply Gaming Tournament. It will be a very long night with a lot of fun about video games uh, realized in the last month. Yes, because in the last month we had the third edition of the Repliers Gaming Tournament. And so I will start by saying thanks to all the Repliers who took part into it. It, it will be, yeah, it have been really uh, a lot of weeks of fun uh, involving more than 200 repliers from all over the world playing in different games uh, in order to reach the finals that, again, we are here to celebrate tonight together with you. Of, of course, as always, I'm not alone and together with me there are a lot of guests. I would like to introduce you, uh, at least the first two people that uh, will be together with me in the next hours uh, commenting the different games uh, and I'm happy to welcome again uh, René Treur and uh, Wolcat, which will be our two casters for the different game. Hi guys, how are you? Hey, good evening man, how are you doing? Oh, uh, we are all good, all good. <laughs> cool, 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 been a while man. Yeah, the, the, uh, I mean, René, it's already the third time we are together to comment yeah. the gaming nights, right? For, for sure, for sure. And hopefully not the last time. No, no, definitely. Absolutely. It's like we are all friends right now. For sure, yeah. <laughs> still, still uh, I mean, live from uh, uh, Holland, nearby Amsterdam, yeah. right? Yeah, New Vein, small town. Still loving it. <laughs> All right, all right, that's good. And uh, I'm happy to welcome again for the second time, if I'm right, yep. uh, uh, one second. of the biggest game, biggest names uh, in the gaming uh, uh, area sector. How do I say it in Italy? Mr. Wolcat, <laughs> hi man. Thank you, thank you so much for having me again. I almost look sunburned. I don't know what's going on with the, my webcam. I assure you, I'm not leaving my PC. That's what I do for a living. <laughs> I'm, I'm handcuffed to it. I've been casting all season. Everything pretty much just came to an end. Uh, the Italian Championship, um, the Korean Championship, which I commented for League of Legends. So, yeah, a lot of stuff came to an end, and we're building up the hype for the mid-season invitational in league. So, wow, uh, yeah, pretty big things coming. All right, thank you guys. And Rocket uh, League. Yeah, yeah, Rocket League uh, as well. We will. Uh, I mean, that, that's what I'm about to do uh, to uh, present, of course, to our audience connected with us. Uh, uh, on two different platforms. If you are in Reply and part of the Replyers community, you may watch us on Chick Norris Television, which is our television, yes, you know, the internal video platform. And my friend here, yes, appearing right now is Mr. Chick Norris at itself. I don't know, guys, you, Rene Walcott, you know this big guy here? Uh, First yes, time I've seeing him. <laughs> I've, I've seen him, but I don't know the story behind it. It's yeah, you know, noise, it, right? it's a long story. It, uh. sh long story in sh short. Uh, it's uh, our, uh, I mean, yes, it's the main character of our internal video platform. Exactly. Nice. The Repliers community decided to name the video platform thanks to this big chicken, big guy here, which name is Chick Norris. And Chick so the Norris. guy here is traveling all around the world in the different reply offices to celebrate the first birthday of the video platform. So Chick, it's your birthday actually. Are you happy about <laughs> it? Yeah, it's it's celebrating. It's a, a <laughs> long week of celebration. We are just in the middle of it. <laughs> yes. All right. It's like and fun. So, yeah, exactly. And so to all the repliers, this is the message. Visit chicknorristv.reply.com, which is the address of our video platform. Enjoy all the contents uh, together with Chick, of course. And uh, yes, have fun together by uh, discovering a lot of interesting contents on the video platform. This is, of course, uh, for the repliers community, and we have a lot of repliers connected. But then if you are out of reply, as René and Walcott, of course, you can uh, enjoy the night on Twitch, reply you account, uh, the control room here, the social media guys are already sharing the different links. And so if you want, again, to watch us and invite your friends, please do so. Just look for a reply on Twitch and you will see our channel in order to spend the next hours together. I have to, uh, I mean, to hurry up because the time is already running. And uh, uh, I would like to show you guys a presentation with the main details of our uh, tournament. Yes, I can advance it. I hope so. Yes, exactly. This is the agenda for tonight in about uh, 10 minutes, even less. We will start uh, 
the FIFA 22 finals were actually, I mean, yeah, uh, we will discover these together. We, we are already experimenting with something new. We had the tournament open to all the repliers with a lot of games and fun, of course. The tournament already ended with a, a, a replier who won the tournament among the different repliers. But then that's the last stage. We have invited a FIFA pro player, part of the reply totem team, who will be really grilled by our replier. And this will be, you know, the face the champ competition where we will have a replier, so a non-professional player, uh, competing with a professional player from the reply totem roster. And we will meet him in a few seconds. Mr. Santil One from the Reply Totem team. We will present him and we will have fun together. Right after this exhibition, let me say, the FIFA 22 Face the Champ game, we will have the Rocket League Finals, another game that we have already played last time. It will be very funny, a super, yeah, thrilling game on Rocket League. So I hope you will have fun together with us in watching it. Right after, we will have another new thing, the Tetris Tournament Finals, that we will happen here in the building with two players uh, playing this very old school game, but then, you know, legendary game, and playing the Tetris Final, I mean, the last part of the Tetris Tournament. It will be very funny, so stay with us for it. Then, right after, the League of Legends Finals, the last game, we will comment it together with Walcott. And uh, uh, this will be the last uh, game that we will play tonight. And then, of course, there will be the final greetings around 11 tonight. But then, you know, the, the timing might change depending on the many games we will play tonight together with you. Let me go on to recap. This is the third edition of the Reply Gaming Tournaments. We have involved more than 220 players all over the world in Reply on five different games. And there has been a 4,000... Uh, prize pool overall, so a lot of prizes for the repliers. If you miss it, we definitely suggest you to stay tuned on the next appointments about, uh, of course, not only the Reply Gaming Tournaments initiatives, but all the others. So if you are in Reply, never miss the, the Social Network weekly mail you receive all Mondays in order never to miss an opportunity for you. This is, of course, an opportunity of networking and fun that we are realizing thanks to the participation of Reply Totem Team, the professional esports team sponsored by Reply in collaboration with Reply. And I, would like, and I would like to say thanks to all the guys in Totem that, I mean, without you, it, it, it can be possible to realize this tournament night. So thank you very much, guys, Mirko, uh, Fabio, and all the others, Federico, all the guys involved into it. Thank you very much all over again. Um, let me go on to, yes, we mentioned four games, but actually five were the competition because it has been already ended, the Call of Duty tournament with the three teams winning it. The, you see here the list, Urlo della Notte, Team 51 and Messier 92. Those were the names of the three teams winning the Call of Duty tournament. Congratulations, guys. You are about to receive your deserved prizes. We had a different night of Call of Duty tournaments and uh, uh, again, a lot of fun with the tons of players into it. The, uh, the same prizes of the Call of Duty tournament will be for the FIFA 22 tournament. So you see there are a lot of Reply Totem merchandising and gaming equipment like the Xbox, the Twitch, the Razer keyboards, the mouses and so on. So a lot of prizes just to just for the winners on podium, just for the podium of the FIFA 22 tournament. And as said, uh, there will be the competition, I mean, the Face the Champ exhibition in about a few minutes uh, against the FIFA 22 pro player Santil One from the Reply Totem uh, team. This is the podium. You see the three, uh, the three names that have deserved the, the prizes, Bagrano, Rob the 90s and AVQ. I hope I'm pronouncing it right. And uh, uh, congratulations, okay. guys. You deserve the prizes. And there will be, uh, I mean, it, it will reach you at your office very soon. The uh, Face the Champ competition, as I said, will be Santil One versus Bagrano, the first on the podium. And we are about to start with it. Let me go on with the uh, Rocket League tournament finals. Uh, I mean, prizes that uh, are, have been already shared. You see those, again, a reply totem equipment and gaming stuff for the people on podium. Those are, will be the uh, two teams facing it, the switch on chairs, 
coming from uh, Autonomous DA in Germany and Cluster Financial Services in Italy versus the Rusty team made by Canvas UK and Blue Hybrid ET Reply in Italy. So congrats, guys. We will meet you in, uh, in minutes. And uh, uh, the Tetris tournament, where two different players, Christian from Pay Reply, will face uh, Marco from Blue Reply. Uh, good luck to all of you, of course, guys. And uh, last but not least, the League of Legends tournament with the same prizes I have already shared, where two teams, uh, Cisco Plan BU8, uh, made of course by Cisco Plan Reply guys, uh, Leonard and Dennis, uh, against the Chrono Break team made by two colleagues in Data Reply UK, Sashin and Alexandru. This is, uh, I mean, the plan for tonight. I have already finished my slides. Rene Walcott, are you ready? It will be very, a very dense night of events i oh, hope you yeah. are <laughs> so exactly ready. i hope i hope you 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 are already ready for that for sure Absolutely. all Let's right the players I, are too yes and i see already the players into it because we already seeing the two uh, players that are about to start the face the champ fifa 22 exhibition i'm happy to welcome Let's start from the underdog, okay? I guess that Antonio will, will say so. We have uh, uh, in front of us Giovanni Filograno from Blue Reply Italy. Ciao, Giovanni. Ciao. Ciao. Hi, everyone. Uh, all good? Where are you connecting from? Are you at home, I guess? Yes, I'm at home in Bari, in Bari. Puglia. Wow, south yes. of Italy. All right. Yes. Very good, man. And uh, uh, so you reached the, 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 the top stage of the podium of the FIFA 22 tournament. Did you have fun in playing against other repliers? Yes, of course. Of course. Right. I, I found uh, some good players oh, playing oh, against. It, it was your first time in a, in a FIFA tournament or you have already played a lot of those? No, this is the first time for me. First time? Oh. First time playing and you're on top of the leaderboard? Sometimes, so uh, lucky man. We have just as a exactly lucky wow. man. <laughs> no, no, no. He won everything too, Nella. He didn't lose a single map. So wow, wow. So you know, you Big you know you you know the business. But man, in front of you, I don't know if you were ready for that or not. Even because you are anyhow, you win the tournament. But then we want to grill the expert. We want to see if you're able to face the champion because in front of you, you have the reply totem team member. And, and I mean, pro player of FIFA 22, Mr. Antonio Santil1. Man, yeah, can you hear yeah, us? everybody. Yep, yep. I hear you, but actually I'm feeling the pressure. I'm oh. kind of shaking <laughs> after this presentation. That's the point. Yeah. That's the point. Because yeah. you... This, you, this, this match will be more important than the, than the qualifications of FIFA. You can... So. Yeah. <laughs> now I'm I'm kind of I'm kind of con concentrated. I I'm drinking my water. Uh, <laughs> it will be, it'll be a, a nice evening. It's, Let me uh, ask you, uh, Antonio, which uh, which are gonna be the main tournament you are about to play in the next month? You you have. Sure. Okay. Okay. In the next month, we are gonna play the third FGS qualifier. Okay. Top. 256 of East Europe are gonna play for the for the prize, and then we have to play the last week of E Club Reply Totem, where which is played two against two player, like uh, cop uh, cop mode. Me and Montax and my team meta. We want to qua we want the qualification for the final stage for the playoffs to represent wow. Reply Totem uh, in uh, in a live event in a live stage uh, on uh, on Stockholm. So wow. <laughs> Good luck, guys, uh, and of course, good luck to the World Reply Totem team uh, in all the competitions, not just FIFA, of course. Uh, and, and you guys, you can follow the Reply Totem Adventures through social media, of course. Just look for Reply Totem on Instagram, Twitter, uh, and so on. And there will be, of course, plenty of opportunities of updates and even some opportunities of gaining some equipment. So if you like so, I mean, just follow the Reply Totem. And uh, uh, okay, rules of the game for this uh, Face the Champ competition. You guys, you are going to play two games, okay? And in case of tie, if you win uh, one both, uh, uh, the number of goals will matter, okay? Okay. Uh, okay. That this is the rule that have been shared. So, uh, okay, everything is set. I guess, Rene, are you ready for that? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, okay. So, I'd like to welcome you into the game. Uh, I see, all right, you are already streaming the 
the um, I mean, yeah, I see the game right now. Okay, it I'm, I'm, I'm inviting him. Okay, you are inviting. Yeah. Don't worry, we are live. So of course, yeah, take your take your time to do so. Uh, I would like uh, uh, again to invite Rene. Would you like to introduce a bit the game? Yeah, for sure. Let's introduce these guys, uh, as of course they are both quality players. Now, uh, you already said it, Giovanni uh, Villograno. He uh, he went through the bracket like uh, like crazy because some of these players they they needed a third map. As we said, they're gonna play two games. And then at the end of that, whoever has uh, won both or maybe has the better uh, scoreline and gets to win it. But in the uh, in the bracket in the uh, replay tournament, it was a, a best of two basically. And actually, Giovanni managed to win every single game 2-0. So he didn't didn't lose one match so wow. far. So let's Bene. see if he can bring that heat tonight. Bene, considering that I never played this kind of uh, of mode with the uh, normal team and yeah. national team, recommend me a team that I can use. Wow. I know you are, you are a huge <laughs> triad of <laughs> that's, that's a big su suggestion you have to make. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would, I would recommend uh, the German national team. German national team. Yeah. Let's try. Or, Let's try for the first game. Yeah. Or, or maybe Manchester City. Lots yeah, of Manchester I City. Lots of quality. Antonio, let me say I won't suggest you to bring the Italian one. Okay. Recent results are not that promising. That's right. Yeah. That's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Italy. Let's oh, go man. with Italy. Yeah, let's go with Italy. Why not? Let's have some fun. strikers, that's for sure. Shiro Immobile, Patrick, just recently for Lazio again. Yeah, yeah, that, that, not 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 when okay. needed, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's yes, okay. Yeah. Um, so Enrico, you are you are a big Juve fan, right? Yeah, Juventus? yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. do confirm. How you, how you feel like Matthijs de Ligt is doing? Did he live up to your expectations or absolutely, he absolutely? He, 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 I mean, he improved by a lot his performances and uh, right now i guess i mean i'm afraid that he's so much on top of the level that i guess we are gonna miss him to, this summer but let's see no, no let's no, no. see i don't think he will leave definitely a leader uh, a leader in the in the field on the field so uh, yeah, yeah a player Even i like by a lot it's still i think he's still only 22 or 23. yes yes uh yeah it's very young absolutely absolutely yeah yeah Look at that. Verratti, okay, I see. Torsinho, okay, Barella, Nicolò Barella, oh, yeah, great player. I see. Chiesa, can't miss him. Okay. Chiesa, no, Chiesa on the right. Chiesa on the right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They are just fine tuning the um, the, the, cool. the lineup, right? Ah, oh, Bern yeah. Bernardeschi is coming in. This is all yeah. Santil one, uh, his lineup. Uh, okay, I'll try. Okay. I'll try. We'll see. Nice. We are we are so, talking about football in the meanwhile. The guys yeah. are shaping the the lineups. Um, yes. Luca Insigne. Okay. Good lineup. Good lineup. Who's managing Di right now? Is Giovanni or Antonio? Me, me, this me. Is, yeah, this is Antonio. Okay. Giovanni is playing with Liverpool, right? Giovanni, can you hear us? Yeah. France, yeah, yeah. I guess. Oh, France. Yeah, France. Oh, cool. Interesting. France, Italy. Wow. Be, so it reminds cool. me very happy memories. World oh. Cup finals in 20 in 20 in yes in 2006 it started yeah. Rene yeah there we go kick off and it's Italy on the ball in the blue kits from left to right France in the white away kit of course France playing a, an away match right now is Giovanni Filograno with the French team on the right side under pressure early on with Santi one poking in midfield looking for an opportunity to penetrate the defense there he goes with a well, not an opportunity just yet, but a speculative through ball attempt. Tries to get it, uh, feed it in towards one of his strikers. Obviously, he's got Chiesa on that right flank in a 4-4-2 situation, or maybe 4-2-2-2 lineup. Have to check with Santil one. Although now Giovanni on the ball. Let's uh, be wary of that France uh, forward line because they have so much speed. Obviously, we're going to see Usman Dembele, very popular player. And obviously uh, Pogba in midfield, most likely. Here we go. Italy on the ball. It's Santil one. Can he score? Good Whoa! skill moves. And there we go with the finish. And he was trying to get that under the roll by saying he's not used to this mode. But look at that. Straight out of the cages like we're used to seeing him do. Obviously, a lot of players like to, when they first play against a certain opponent that they haven't met before, they like to 
play the ball around and see how their opponent reacts to it for 10 to 15 minutes, but not Santil one. He goes straight for the jugular and here he comes again. Obviously he feels that he has that favorite role being the pro player here. Pro player for Reply Totem, former player of uh, Hexon Esports as well. I'm watching, Rene, I'm watching the two guys playing. Uh, Santid one is kind of smiling. Giovanni yeah. is very focused. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He almost got Now, now a smiling a bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably because he's listening to you. Yeah, are you enjoying the first 15 minutes, Enrico? It's going so fast, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, by a lot. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Santi one on the ball once again. He has dominated possession, although just by about 5 to 10%, I guess. Uh, so far, but he is uh, proving to be very, very good on the ball. Antonio Santillo, although right now he gets the through ball, the lofted through ball from Giovanni against him. This should oh. be a goal. Oh, he goes for the layoff, but the defender is there. Well read. Oh, well read by Santillo. One. That was a Chiellini move. Oh, yeah, for sure. No, not sure, but. <laughs> <laughs> Such an experienced defender. Knows exactly what to do in a situation like that. Let's see if he can do the same up front. Nicolo Barella from distance, maybe. Insignia, oh, tries to square it. Doesn't get it to his uh, friend in the forward line. I don't think... Santil one. you didn't feel Immobile, right? No, I, I, I put Immobile, even if on this game is not that good, actually. But Chiro mm -hmm. is our striker. It's a lot. There is a lot of... Uh, Rumor about Immobile and the national team because he's not performing, but I like him, so yeah, I'm using him. Sure, yeah. <laughs> Let's see if we can get the in-game images up again. Because right now I'm looking at Santi, <laughs> which is making it hard to comment on the match. Yeah, exactly. I, I, was, I was about to ask uh, Santi one if there yeah. there is opportunity to talk in the in real professional game uh, against other pro players. No, no way. Yeah, there is no opportunity now. No opportunity to talk. Okay. At least we can talk unique. with our coach. Yeah, sure. Okay. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is a unique uh, glimpse of what we get. Exhibition. Exhibition. Or, Former X Seed and X on esports player. And I'm looking at. Oh, look oh! at the 2 0. No, just wide of the target at the 30 minute mark. That would have been a great moment to. Chiro, grab that now I recognize lead. you. <laughs> Chiro, <laughs> is it I, you? I, I think Sorry it was about not that. Chiro. Sorry I think about it that. Was not Chiro, I think it was uh, Insigne. Yeah. I, it was Marelle, I guess. Okay, my bad. My bad. <laughs> no worries. So, uh, looking at the uh, esports wiki of uh, Santil One, he has won some prize money in. Uh, FIFA 21 mainly in the global series, in the FGS qualifiers. Back then still with uh, Hexon Esports, I guess. And let's see if we can get the in-game images up for the last uh, 15 minutes of the first match. We have a little while to go. Giovanni should be able to get back in this and score at least one goal. He has shown himself dangerously in the box a few times right now Santi one on the ball however 10 minutes left to go in the first half here he goes trying to tie some passes together on the edge of the box right now a lot of white shirts to deal with but here he goes reaching Immobile and then in the end the final pass of Chiro comes begging once again that is maybe what we've come used to seeing from him outside of Lajo he also tried his luck in uh, Borussia Dortmund in the Bundesliga just one season and then he went back to Lajo because it didn't turn out the way he and Borussia wanted. But for Lajo, of course, he is an invaluable player. Look at that Whoa. big chance for France. Giovanni tries to whip in a cross. It gets diver diverted into a corner. There he goes, tries to take it short. Mm. Until one reads it like a book. Not Steps that well played. Between. No, no, that's true. <laughs> Enrico, are you piling on the pressure on Giovanni? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, he's trying. <laughs> Until one on the ball, he's probably gonna try and go for the final chance. Almost loses the ball, almost relinquishes possession. However, manages to hold on to it. In fact, he's on the other end once again, near the box. Over the cross, no, usually that short combinations, the give and go. Runs into the box, Insignia. Room for a shot, maybe Pellegrini. Now we're getting a bit of a lag by Chiesa, and Insignia finishes. Insane, well done. And that is, a, that is a great read from Santil One. Usually players would probably shoot with Federico Chiesa in that position. Till the, til the, the second goal, it, it seems to me it was kind of balanced game anyhow, Rene. What do you think? 
Yeah, for sure. We saw a few chances for Giovanni, a bit more uh, possession and a bit more high quality chances for Santi Juan. But it's not like Giovanni has no chance whatsoever. No, absolutely. So, absolutely. Oh, so, yeah. Maybe we could see second half uh, be a different affair. And of course, after this game, we've got another one coming out. It's a best of two. Don't count anyone out just yet. Here we go. Good through ball. The shot. Uh, it's a tight angle and they keep him in the short corner, so it's hard to beat him from there. But of course, he didn't have many options up front, so that was basically the right decision there. Santillo. Here he goes again, through ball on the right flank. This time he can give it. Oh, can't reach him. Good defending from front from Giovanni. And here we go. I can't read the chat in the right bottom because of the resolution, unfortunately. However, good to see some support from the reply community. Right there, I think that was Mirko. Oh, here we go, France, Giovanni. Here he comes, the man from Bari. I think he moved to Milan for work at some point, but probably moved yeah, back to right. Bari once again. Or are you just visiting Bari right now? No, uh, I'm visiting Bari. I'm coming back home uh, like uh, for weekends sometimes, oh, but nice. uh, I just moved to Milan for work. Nice, nice, nice. Do you like life in Milan? Uh, yes, but uh, I think uh, sometimes uh, Bar is better. <laughs> <laughs> you can you can ask a guy from Puglia to to see <laughs> if he prefers Milan or or his home country. I know. It's, oh, Whoa! look at that! Not a big chance. Until one with Bernardeschi, Federico, Juventus player. That must be good for you to see, uh, Enrico. Yeah, yeah, I see. I mean, it, it happens in alter, only in virtual reality, actually. But then that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so there we go. Giovanni Filograno, we know that his uh, father is a big uh, Milan fan. I can imagine because, of course, like 20 years ago, that was one of the best teams, if not the best team in the world in the still 90s the and team. in the start of this millennium. It's still the, he's still the best team. Actually. Milan, yeah, you're a big fan too? <laughs> Yeah, nice. I'm a Milan supporter. Nice. Well, this year, good chance to become champion. I, I would I would so. really like to see it happen for Slatan, for him to have his final season and maybe for him to play a few games at the end of the season because, of course, injury trouble recently. But I want to see him come back fit and play a few games and then make the difference, maybe. Score another few goals and then become champion with Milan and then maybe retire. I'm a big Slatan fan. Obviously, a, a history in Ajax. Right now, of course, score still at 3-0, uh, I think. Although right now we don't have the in-game footage. We'll whip it back up for you, for the viewers as well. Antonio Santillo versus Giovanni Filograno. It's a clash. It's an epic showdown so far. It's been a little one-sided in the scoreline. However, we've seen chances on both sides. Santillo with the ball, with possession, almost loses it. But France can't keep hold of it. Griezmann chasing the ball. Pogba as well, but Bernadeschi won't have none of it. In fact, he plays in Chiro Immobile, the shot Ow! gets scrunched by the keeper. Oh, that's a good challenge, but in the end, Hugo Lloris. Oh, look at that. We've got a little bit of an injury situation. Maybe he can walk it off. Maybe he can still continue. Usually you can see players still be able to, uh, to do something. Although in the center of your defense, might want to substitute him out for the last 20 minutes of the game however we're about to find out front step in between giovanni on the ball once again oh that's a cold as ice move there in between two strikers <laughs> yeah <laughs> ice water in his veins however he needs to uh, up the pressure up the tempo because he needs to score three goals of course to get back in this force uh force a draw in fact of course if we get a a draw in game two, then uh, Whoa, then we would be looking nice at nice ball. Oh, look at that! Then we would be looking at score difference. It if, reminds uh, me the Modric assist of yesterday night. Oh yeah, <laughs> outside of the right foot, crazy. Yeah, it was yeah, a, exactly. Rodrigo just needed to tap it in. Yeah, yeah. I think that was Rodrigo's Move first move of punch. a champion. Yeah, for sure. And uh, Benzema as well. Even if it's Ramadan, he, yeah, I'm sure. he, bar he barely eats during the day, barely you're drinks. Right, you're right to mention that. Oh, yeah, for sure. Last week it already started and he still managed a hat-trick, so crazy. Crazy good. I always wonder what would have become of him 
if he didn't play in in support of Cristiano Ronaldo for so many years? Because he's he's always been like Firmino does for Salah and Mane at Liverpool. Yeah. He always was the guy who hung back a little bit to yeah play yeah the it supporting in cast Ronaldo. yeah exactly supporting maybe not use his full capabilities but play in support of the other guy. Oh well. <laughs> wow. Yeah, this is good stuff. Antonio has full control of the game now in the second half. He's he's riding that wave. He's riding the 3-0 lead. And of course, he doesn't need to do much except kill as much time as possible when he's on the ball. Right now, France come in. Giovanni is going to try and get at least one goal. That's a good through ball combination to give and go into the box. Gets taken out. Not a foul, says the referee. Would have been too light to give a penalty if it was outside of the box. That would have been a free kick, probably. But good sliding tackle on the ball, and then the man. So of course, not a penalty. Where, where is my foul. Mbappe? <laughs> why, why I don't have Mbappe in my, in my team? Yeah. Kylian Mbappe. Oh, that's an insane player. Do you think he will go to Real Madrid? I think so. But you would like Yay! him to come to Milan, right? Oh, that—that's oh, the penalty. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. Injury time, just one minute, so this will probably be it. Referee blows his whistle as we're about to head into, uh, well, a well-deserved rest for, for both these players. Um, how did you like the first match against uh, Antonio Giovanni? Um, I, I, I like it by a it's lot. It's very, very hard. Yeah, yeah exactly. And th that's the question for uh, Antonio. You, by playing, I mean, the meanwhile you were playing, you have somehow discovered some, uh, you know, the, the way Giovanni was playing and so on how to face it. In the meanwhile of the game, you have discovered yeah. something you weren't. Oh, actually, actually, he's playing really good, especially in defense. He is not uh, doing some stuff that. Uh, we used to say common players do it. So he, he was playing good. He was uh, good in defense, uh, waiting where it, it has to post weight. Uh, but sometimes he was not called uh, as he, he has to be in some opportunities. He waits some opportunities, but it was nice. He was, he was good. He was good. Let's see in the second game if uh, uh, our, uh, I mean, the repliers, the replier champion of the gaming tournament dedicated to FIFA 22, Mr. Giovanni Filograno from Blue Reply Italy, based in Bari, are, is facing against the FIFA pro player from the Reply Totem roster, Mr. Antonio Santil, one that, uh, I mean, again, uh, uh, is here, guest, uh, special guest of this night uh, in the FIFA 22 gaming tournament to face the champ exhibition. Uh, are you keeping the same teams, right? Or, or, or changing? He switched. So, uh, yes, I, I switched to Germany. Yeah, okay. You're, you're All right, so, yeah, I see it. Okay, yeah, okay. I listen. <laughs> but you know that you know that Germany against Italy never wins, so I, that, I don't think it was, yeah. it, was good, <laughs> it was a good, just a good it's, choice. It's, it's an underdog, uh, uh, an underdog tactic. I don't know how to say. <laughs> yeah, maybe trying to surprise. So yeah, Giovanni, exactly. you you haven't played tournaments before. But have you faced a pro player like this before? A player of uh, Santil's no, level. First time for me. First time. Yeah, yeah. It's always. First time is always the most confronting, and then yes. when you face someone his caliber more often, then you then you start to learn those sort of tricks and and try and see and analyze what they do, and it will help you become a better player. That's for sure. So this is an invaluable experience. So just enjoy it, man. And uh, yeah, of course, of course, I'm enjoying it. Yeah, for sure. So guys, uh, Giovanni Filograno, he's played uh, PES in the past. Started out in 2011, if I have uh, done my homework right and then switch to FIFA at some point, starting out on a PlayStation 2, then PlayStation 3, PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, and, but you betrayed oh. Sony, I heard, with an Xbox in between. We have Italy scoring already within five minutes, and this time it is him, Ciro, <laughs> the king of Lagio. He scores. Of course, a good goal as well. Wow, Italy on the front foot already. Germany now has to fight back. Giovanni with Germany. Let's see what he can do. Already comes close to the penalty area there, 16-yard box in sight. However, here comes the counter, Italy on the ball. Antonio, yep. the man from Reply. Oh, here he goes, unleashing a shot. Crunched in the body of defenders, however, already very dangerous in the first 10 minutes. And of course, last year, 
I had the opportunity to cast the game together with Antonio, but of course, now let him focus on his match. Today, today I'm doing my job actually. Last nice. time I was, uh, yeah, 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 uh, relaxing, doing uh, something else. <laughs> yeah. I'm better playing than uh, <laughs> than. Yeah. than uh, uh, I, think, I think commentating is something that you also get better at as as you do it more, more and more. It, yeah. It's it's not something that you you get born to do. I think. I think. Uh, the more often you do tournaments and matches, the, the better you'll get at it. Especially if you watch back your own footage. It's probably just the same as a player. As a player, you're probably watching your own matches back, right? And then trying to analyze what went well, what went wrong. So that's the same way I go about it as a commentator. I, uh, I try and watch and listen and see what annoys me and, and what sounds different from professional commentators. And then yeah, I have to be honest, it's a while back, but that's the way uh, I did it at the start of my career at the very least. Well, let's see uh, what's going on in game as we switch back. Oh, look at that. I can switch myself. Let me just find out. There we go. Italy on the ball once again. Santil one coming out dangerously. Took a 2 0 lead early on in the first half of the first match. I see, I see a bit of front. Neymar moves here. Oh, yeah, skill moves. <laughs> Good juggling. The little drag backs. Mm. Um, elastico action here and there. Yeah, yeah. So last year in FIFA 21, we had an overpowered move at the start, the bridge. And at some point, they nerfed it. But this year, there, there's a bit more different moves that you can use effectively. And it, it helps make the game better, for sure, as a fewer sport. There we go, Giovanni. Oh! Here it comes. Oh, so close. Good attack, well played, good combinations, it's not done yet, danger not averted entirely just yet, although in the end Santi Juan does step in between, 25 minutes has been played, 1-0 the scoreline, and let's not forget if Giovanni wins this match, it goes to goal difference, so right now, 4 goals for Santi Juan, maybe 5 if he can finish this, that's a good ball roll there, at the exact right time, keeps possession, however, look at the defensive format of Germany the organization is there and in the end they can't take over however options up front are scarce although oh. they are quick on the counter they are quick on the break good transfer three guys up front already good combination here on the right side of the pitch cross pass coming in trying to find space until one has his formation right now just the way he wants it in defensive mode look at that through ball attempt well read by Giovanni who has come he Giovanni not surrendering anyhow. No, for no, sure. never. Absolutely. Never. <laughs> never give up. He's never give better up. at reading what Santi One is doing. You can you can all already feel it because first match he was already 2-0 behind at this point in the match. Here he comes. Giovanni good through oh! ball. Oh, oh, make his count. So close. That's and a big save. Right there. Yeah, big save by the keeper. Was that some uh, manual goalkeeping there, Santil? Yep, I yeah. I moved the keeper to the opposite side uh, for the shoot on the on the other post. Oh! Exactly, yeah. So you so you can see how quickly these That's... guys are thinking. He's not just yeah. controlling defenders; he's already positioning his keeper as well, where he thinks the shot is going to come. In order to be able to this do that nice. so quickly, it's it's just like basically fractions of a second that you have time to do it. Here it comes. Oh, almost. Well defended by Giovanni. And here he has space on the right flank to maybe build an attack. Obviously, later today, we have Rocket League, Tetris and League of Legends coming in as well. We've got the legendary Warcat picking up the microphone for those games. I love how he's not just focused on his uh, expertise, League of Legends. He's also uh, picking up games like Rocket League. Oh, there we go. Big chance, Giovanni makes Whoa! it count. Equalizer just before the break. Kai Havertz does it once again. The man who's been scoring. That's a goal you will remember, the... man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Giovanni breaking his duck against professional player already in his first outing. Of course, in the second match of a two-legged tie. However, yeah, actually, it was a nice good. one. It was a nice... Nice switching from the left to the right, then uh, going into the center. You yeah, know, sure. it, it's different. We compete on the FIFA Ultimate Team mode, so playing with this team, it's strange. 
because yeah. you know that there is a meta in every in every game and uh, actually Italy has no meta player so <laughs> it's yeah. it's really strange but at the same time um, here there is less bug less uh, mechanics that you can do so yeah. it's also nice playing this uh, this mode yeah for sure so obviously you you can't be on your automatic pilot so to speak exactly as you say, the meta, uh, for, for viewers that don't know, meta, most efficient tactic available. It's something that we use as a gaming term for uh, for basically what most pro players like to do in certain games. Obviously in FIFA last year, it was 4-2-3-1, the basic formation that everybody used. And then maybe during play, if it doesn't work, switch up to something else. But this year, something one it, yeah. there hasn't been one formation that everyone is using, although for... I at the two? beginning, four four two. At the beginning, yeah. a lot of people. Now, with um, a lot of people, is playing with four three two one. That is yeah. a strange one, but because you need a lot of movement, a lot of uh, uh, a lot of width, a lot of uh, how to say midfielder going to, going into the into the box. So yeah, exactly. You you have to to do it, but. There is no one formation. Uh, the only thing that exactly. is really, really important is the five star uh, skill moves for the player. The player yeah. with five star skill moves are more used than the other. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Do you have any icons in your foot team? Actually, are R9 and Kulit. Oh, nice. R9 and Kulit. Yeah. Kulit probably central midfield and then R9, of course, striker. Or do you have him on the flank? No, no, no. Striker, striker. Striker, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's got a crazy shot, R9. Go, talking about, go. <laughs> talking about the Brazilian <laughs> Ronaldo, of course, go. Ronaldo, Luis Nazario de la Lima. Here we go, Santi one on the <laughs> ball once again. Oh, he's not going to get in front. Crunched and a good sliding tackle. Keeper was uh, close to being beaten, but defender helps out. That's Giovanni being very, very sharp. Like we said, he's become better at reading what Santi one is doing right now, using Germany to its full. Giovanni, we, we are doing our best to distract an Antonio, so it's, exactly. it's right now your job, okay, to do something. <laughs> oh, look hey, at you that. you have to do better. <laughs> Enrico, now you have distracted Giovanni, and that's this is what point. happens. No. Oh, there we go. No. Yeah. That's on you. Enrico, that's on you, man. My bad. My bad. My oh, bad. It's Never going to miss from that. Good go once again. Antonio, making it count. If you see him in your box, you're sweating, that's for sure, even if you're a pro player. Giovanni had a spectacular tournament, like we said, coming in through the bracket. He's played, let's see, five matches in a row, all of them 2-0, never dropped a single one. And of course, let's not forget, last year, Hayastan, Daniel Badrosian, or Hayastan 10, as we know him in the gaming world, he was the number one. He did play again this year's tournament. However, he went out in the first round of the knockout in the brackets. So it was a tough competition this year. Obviously, Giovanni did very, very well. Today, he is struggling, of course, against the man in uh, top form, a professional FIFA player from Reply Totem. Here we go, Giovanni on the ball, trying to get back in this. Well done, cutting off the passing lines in midfield. You can see that Santi One's formation is very effective, especially in defense. It seems that by a lot, I mean, in a way, the change of the team from France to Germany helped a bit, right? Mm, yeah, maybe, maybe. Although, of course, when it comes to national teams, there's there's not a team stronger than France, especially with the with yeah, the speed true, in attack. True. Yeah. Uh, however, it it does seem like Santi One has more possession and more chances so in that case i think the defense of france and the defense of germany doesn't have that big of a difference yeah yeah so right in that case so yeah and I, I think it's just giovanni getting more comfortable that that's uh, a point maybe one yeah. is playing i think when he started out obviously he went in it the way he usually enters any fifa match and you have to get used to an opponent either way even if they're not a professional sure uh, sure to that... the way that they play and when it's a professional, it's even harder, of course, to read. So I think he's done a good job at least uh, getting uh, getting comfortable with the way Santu plays and trying to counter it. He's doing a good job. Like we see here once again, taking over possession. Still in his own half. He's got 18 minutes left to go in game minutes, of course, talking about. 
after that. Let me we'll ask see. Antonio, how many hours of training per day on average? Uh, in this period, a lot because we have competition in a, in a while. So five, six hours. I, I actually I used to do live stream. So after the live stream, that is three, four hours. Then I train in the afternoon, uh, uh, other three hours, more or less. Three, wow. four hours. So it's like six, seven hours per day in this yeah. period. And let me ask Giovanni, how many hours on the job for our clients? <laughs> <laughs> Minimum do, do eight you, per day. Yeah, exactly. That's the question for you. Do you have uh, six hours a day that you can use to train yourself to beat Antonio? Maybe in the night, yeah, I don't know, instead of sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. So something one, how many hours a week do you spend on watching FIFA? So maybe, for instance, E Serie A is in the later stages right now. I think it's the last four teams, right? Venezia, Saler Salernitana, Torino, and Sassuolo. Actually, it finished today. Oh, it's finished uh, today. Yes. Do you know who was champion? Torino. Torino won. Torino. Ah, nice. Oh wow. So it's Obrun. Obrun 2002. Yes. Nice. He's a good player. I think he's in the national team as well. I saw. I did a lot of. Um... Actually, I lo I lost at the at the last stage for the national team. Oh, it, was, it was a bit unlucky because it's a it's a really great opportunity to be part of the national team. Oh yeah, for sure. It was so a great close. experience in Coverciano and I was close to qualify. Close to qualifying. Oh man! Can so they you... selected. Did they select the top four of the tournament? Um, did they select? In... Uh, how many players did they select in the end? I think about six, four, right? Six, oh, six, six even. Yeah, yeah. Because I've done a lot of uh, E-Nation series uh, for Belgian TV and uh, Belgium was in the same bracket as Italy for a few times. So uh, I With saw Stefano Pina, I guess. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Stefano Pina, Gilles Bernard and uh, Shadow. Cantin van der Wattin. Mm, and of course, yeah. I think uh, <laughs> Karim is backplate, the Venetia yeah. player. Yes, yes, and yes. Let me think, who else? Uh, uh, Obrun, Obrun, Kacha, Obrun from Torino. Guarino. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, Italy was uh, unbeatable a few days. A really good selection. We did our best in order to distract Antonio <laughs> in trying to <laughs> help Giovanni in uh, in tying the game. But then, nonetheless, this was the face the champ exhibition with the replier fight winning repliers of the FIFA gaming tournament among the other repliers against a FIFA pro player Santi one from the reply totem team I did my job I was, I was <laughs> <here>. <laughs> Rene your, I your comment uh, I think I'm, I'm very impressed with how Giovanni performed against Santi one the first time I played against a pro player I lost 3-0 as well <laughs> but that was in the first half so then uh, <laughs> I didn't get to play the second half that's a rule in Holland if you lose 3-0 in the first half you have to uh, crawl under the table and not come back. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, so Giovanni, well done, man. Uh, Santi, one, do you? Thanks. After these two games, uh, is there anything that you feel Giovanni uh, should focus on if he wants to become uh, better and maybe even try and become a pro player? What What would be uh, your main point of focus? Actually, like I say to a lot of people that is asking me that, uh, I think that the most important thing this year is to learn that those skill moves that are really important in offense in offense then uh, in defense yeah. he, he was quite good he was like following every cut of the um, of the striker so he it was he was he was very good but in offense you have to be creative this year because it, yeah. defense is powerful so that, that's all that's all can i what can i recommend to you yeah. fantasy cool. creativity fantasy creativity <laughs> yeah Thank you very yeah, much for your uh, participation, Giovanni, your, your comments. Ah, it was uh, two beautiful games, two beautiful matches, uh, but uh, I tried to score. Fortunately, I scored one goal <laughs> in two games. It was just uh, like a victory for me. You will, you will remember it, right? I will remember it. <laughs> <laughs> Nice, nice, nice. 
I see that you, um, you you're not too eager when when you're on defense you stay calm and you you don't force the situation you don't make a mistake you just wait for the opponent to make the decision which usually triggers a mistake on their part so that's something that you should keep on doing it's very very well done something for our viewers if they want to become a, a good FIFA player as well something to be wary of don't be too eager don't be too aggressive chasing the ball in midfield just let them come to you soak in the pressure and maybe get your formation in uh, in order and then at some point there will be a mistake where you can usually intercept the ball uh Santi, want any any more tips for our viewers we will we will talk in private i can't i can say that to, to <laughs> all the audience yeah, yeah. <laughs> open we, your name yeah. yeah i can't i can't explain my secrets of yeah, course, yeah, of that, course. you're right. Thank you <laughs> very much. <laughs> to, it, was a, it was a pleasure for me. It was the second time here and I had fun this time, like the first one. It's a really nice opportunity that you that Reply Totem gave me. So it was a, it was a really nice evening with you again. We are happy sure. to yeah. to to have you together with us tonight again. Thank you very much. Uh, Santil one from the Reply Totem team and uh, good luck, man, for all your tournaments in the near future. Finger crossed. Yes, exactly. We will follow you to the Reply Totem accounts. Thank you very much to Giovanni Filograno from Blue Reply Italy. Ciao Giovanni. Thank you. See you soon Bye. at the office. And uh, thank you very much to Mr. René Treur for being together with us, the broadcaster. René, up to yeah, you if you would so like much. to stay with us uh, in about one hour from now. No, even less, sorry. Uh, we will have the Tetris finals that maybe you would like to see together with us since you are a Tetris player already, yeah, as you sure. mentioned. Well, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not even a, a player. Actually, I used to play when I was young. Okay. Uh, and then, then last year I was at the tournament and I decided to just hop in there and, and, and try. And then I won and this one. And then you won the award. There it is, Tetris. <laughs> That's Play. it. So if you'd so like, crazy. we are happy to, to keep you together yeah, with us. You've got Rocket League coming up first, right? Yes, right now it's coming, the Rocket League wow. finals, exactly. So I, I love it. I love Rocket League. All right, so stay with us. If you'd like, you can for watch sure. it together with us. Again, we are live for the Reply Gaming Tournament finals, live on Chick Norris Television, commented with us on Chick Norris TV as part of the Chick Norris Week festival for the first birthday of our beloved video platform but then it's already time to welcome again mr walcott in order to comment hi man welcome back again uh, we are about to uh, to start a new game which is a rocket league the, the thrilling game made of cars and balls in a futuristic arena uh, walcott are you ready for that i guess okay Please. just yes now we can hear you I wasn't. I was making sure I wasn't disturbing the the casting from Rene. I know he's really enthusiastic about Rocket League as well, so it'd be a pleasure for me if you wanted to hop in. Why not? And, uh, Why not? Definitely. Coming out with the cast, especially since <laughs> uh, especially since English is not my native language. So Rene, yeah. please hop in if you feel like. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You said you said exactly what Rocket League is about. An adrenaline game, uh, which recently got the mobile version, by the way. So if you're not into the uh, very highly mechanical game for for PC or for consoles, you can try the version for mobile which is much more simple uh, it's uh, 2d basically so if you still like the game but you have you don't have all the time to commit to learning that very tough mechanics sure, uh, from sure. the pc game you can try the mobile one by the way also it's it's uh, an explosive esport i don't know what's going on the game is like six years old and still keeps yeah. on giving we have more yeah. and more competitions coming in uh, italy just got his um he, he now has four leagues the Serie A, just uh, borrowing the name from the uh, football competition. Sure. And now we also have Serie B, C, and D. So wow. it's really, uh, <laughs> yeah, an up and coming it keeps growing. Esports. Yeah, yeah, and the community insane. as well. I think it was a great move to make the game free to play a little over a year ago. That, True. That, that helped make it explode, man. Let me, let me welcome the repliers, which are about to, to start the finals. We have uh, two teams uh, that uh, will, of course, uh, uh, face uh, on the arena. Let me welcome uh, from Autonomous Reply Germany, Adrian Sorin, uh, that together with Giuseppe Fagnani from Cluster Financial Services Italy are making the switch on chair 
team that will be already the winners of the last edition. So welcome yeah, I recognize again. the chair. Back I definitely back. recognize the chair. Exactly, exactly. And uh, uh, then against them, we will have the Rusty team made by Kieran Lynch from Canvas Reply UK. The, together with Luca Saldamarco from Blue Hybrid Reply Italy. Hi, guys. All good? Just wave your hands to say hi. Hi, everyone. Hello. Hi, hi there. Good luck. Thanks happy, for having us. Happy to see you all. Congratulations for reaching the finals. We are uh, uh, ready to start, I guess. We already seen the ball. Let's go. I expect a very dynamic play style. Also, the past finals have been so chaotic and fast. Everyone was tossing the ball up, just running towards the enemy goal, playing really aggressively, and that's what I'm here for. I hope they're still going to keep up the aggression, especially the former champions, since it worked really well for them in the past uh, tournament. So, yeah, I expect them to play really aggressive. Most times, actually, both of them going for the ball and playing really aggressive, not like taking turns, one defending, the other one attacking. They used to have a very dynamic attack in uh, in tandem, in, in a duo, I would say. So, yeah, I, I expect the Rusty team to have a sort of a counter strategy to it. Usually, you get punished a lot when you play that aggressive. So, I guess the former champions need to watch out, maybe change the strategy a little bit. We're going to have a best of three. So I see. I see. Kieran writing. He's still waiting for the invitation to join. I guess so. Oh, this okay. is what we are waiting for. Don't worry, guys. We are live, so no problem. Please point out any issue you have. Let me know if it is working already. I see the control room. Uh, the control room is working in order to let you enter the server. Uh, that's okay. I mean, we will wait the, the required time. Again, we are live. It's uh, uh, 9 and 28 minutes right now. Uh, you have to check Discord, they are telling me, in order to enter the server. Um, in the meanwhile, yes, why not? I'd get back to, uh, to Walcott to, um, I mean, better introduce the, the competition. The, yeah, you already, I mean, described it a lot. I guess that one of the... One of the luckiest part of this game is even, you know, the crazy idea at the end, right? It's very, you know, <laughs> uh, it's yeah. popular uh, because crazy, maybe. How yeah, to say. I guess so. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. It's like the, the, the perfect mix of some of the most popular games genre, if you think about it. Racing games and football games. So it was bound to be a success and they managed to, uh, like make this esports scene grow from the grassroots and becoming this world sensation where everyone pretty much knows about the game. It's so spectacular to watch. It's really tough to learn. So everyone actually trying the game for themselves has a lot uh, of room to grow. Like the, the, the player that has his first few sessions will probably just manage to slightly touch the ball towards the enemy uh, yes. goal and then uh, after hours and hours of free practice you'll end up seeing these insane alley-oops tosses uh flying assists and then slam dunking the ball <laughs> mid-air into the enemy goal so yeah it it, it makes for a really spectacular esport so i i have yeah. no doubt it's going to still grow in the next years yeah, have your skill ceiling is higher than than probably any esports title that's out there and i think yeah. what helps tremendously as well is that anyone can pick it up uh when you have a little bit of time after breakfast before you have to go to work it a game only takes five to ten minutes yeah. so yeah, sure. you can't play a game of counter-strike or league of legends before work but obviously exactly. you can pick up your laptop just set it on your lap and, and then go for a game and then you'll be done within 10 minutes so that helps it be a tremendously popular title as well but the skill ceiling like Walcott says it's yeah. it's insane it's absolutely just because insane. i have you both here my, my humble opinion i mean just my guessing is fifa requires a lot of practice and you know there is a, a room for being very professional on that kind of game to really be you know the cristiano ronaldo or the messi of the game is yeah. it the same for games like rocket league where I mean, you might be, uh, I don't say lucky, but uh, I mean, it, it's even a matter if it's a, a team game based or maybe there are less ways to be very professional on it, or am I wrong? 
Well, first and foremost, Rocket League is a team game. So like building the chemistry with your team, the, the most popular formula would be with three players versus three. So it's already a, a lot of work for the individual to master the mechanics of the game, which uh, as Rene said, the, the ceiling is so high. Basically, no one really reaches it. It's, yeah. it's like a work in prog progress that lasts forever for most players. And then you also have to put on that the chemistry that you have to build with your teammates. And most of the top tier teams have, have so many different roles they can cover. They perfectly read each other. They perfectly rotate on defense and on offense. And yeah, it's, it's just spectacular. It's like watching uh, synchronized uh, swim uh, since, athletes. Since you say it's so Walcott, the game has started. So I oh, leave you the okay. stage because it's already live. Okay. And uh, as I expected, a lot of action. This time they kind of take some more turns. As you can see, uh, blue team is kind of now uh, waiting for the opposing uh, enemies to come out of the goal and try to discover some options on the offense. And as they do, Giraffe is right there capitalizing on the on a clear that wasn't really that good. Ball stays there, bounces off the wall, and immediately the tapping is there for Giraffe already scoring in these finals for the uh, former champions team. So Rusty team is going to have tough work to do here. They're going to win the kickoff, putting the ball in the enemy side. Good clear. Oh, kind of a threatening one. Almost a good on goal shot. Now there's time to rebuild another through ball. But Giraffe is not there this time. He's already returned to defense. Good control over the midfield, but Giraffe takes the ball, tosses him up, and then kind of slams it down, but it's a weak shot, and the orange team is right there to go on offense. Good, clear. Pepe Tanya clearly in the right position there to clear the ball efficiently. Giraffe, really dynamic defender, never stops for a single moment. And as you can see, these two players from the blue team are now much more disciplined than the last time, I reckon. They're now taking turns, defending the ball. They disturb the offense. As you can see, Orange team kind of doesn't know what to do. Now kind of doing some good old Catenaccio from uh, Italian football style. Good defense, good control over the ball in their own midfield, but they can wait now. They're in advantage. They can take it very patiently, very slowly. Let Giraffe do his thing on offense, and they are now totally there we go. discovered. And yeah, they got the ball in race with the goal. The first time they got a little too excited about going on offense, the blue team leaves the goal open for an easy orange goal. Oh, what's that? <laughs> It's a pretty grim animation. Yeah, the Green Reaper coming out of the <laughs> goal. Agree. Yeah, I do agree. It's a pretty cool looking one. Yeah, there's plenty of those. That's also probably an aspect that a lot of fans of the esports really like. The customization options are yeah. really endless. Whoa, oh, careful with the enough. bounce off the wall. Orange team almost getting an advantage right before they tie the game. But that opens up for the easiest goal ever from Giraffe. It was a very good offense by the orange team. They had to try and go together, tossing it against the wall for like a sort of a alley up assist. But once the, the shot wasn't put in the goal, of course, the blue had a chance to counter attack and pretty much score the easiest goal ever. Now again, straight off in control of the ball. He's going for a lot of aerials plays and he definitely has a lot of control mid air. He's really good at that. Pepe Tanya, not the easiest clearance, but he still gets it. That's such a tough clearance to make when you're running in the same direction of the ball and you have to kind of touch it with the roof of your car and just barely raise it up the bar to prevent the goal. Nice defense here. They kind of have a, two definite roles this time, Giraffe and yeah. Pepe. They kind of uh, evolved their own gameplay. You can see how Giraffe is the more dynamic player. But yet again, they kind of wow. mix it up. They tried to go both on offense. I was just about to say that this time Pepe and Giraffe looked much more disciplined. Giraffe being the one really aggressive, exploring options for offense. And Pepe was the one taking it more slowly, usually staying on defense. But again, you cannot refrain from going on offense if your teammates make make good through ball for you. And that's exactly what happened. Pepe got tempted by it, left the goal open, and Orange team was yet again there to punish. Careful, Giraffe with the Good shot, but just short on the right. Oh, nice dribbling here on the wall from Kizil. 
he doesn't get his teammate to actually believe in that good assist and now go back to defense pepe put it in right in the middle of the area but no one's there to put it in giraffe kind of tried it demolition from kizzle it's a temporary 2v1 but the offense has to slowly reorganize Kind of a messy tap in there. No one is there to clear Pepe, just barely touching the ball, keeping it midfield. Now he has to take the boost and recover, but Giraffe, of course, is very disciplined this time, waiting on defense. Orange is kind of pressuring a lot. There's no one at the moment that's just holding the goal. This is a very risky ball control in the middle of the field. Giraffe could have been really aggressive. Almost a known goal there, almost making the work for the Orange team, making the perfect assist down the box. But Pepe is there with the clearance again. Giraffe taking it with discipline. I don't think he has any boost. He's really One minute slowly left. taking it outside. One minute oh, left. Well done. Kind of a messy ball down the middle, but... Oh, Orange. Oh. Kind of a messy clearance. No one's <laughs> there to capitalize, though. Oof, getting out there with some sweat on their foreheads, I believe. Giraffe being really aggressive. Good tapping for Pepe. He's right there. And this time it's Pepe bringing it home from the assist from Giraffe in a clutch situation with only 40 seconds to go. Pepe scoring for the team. As you can see, the player that stays mostly defensive also has to go on offense when it's required. And here Pepe was really patient and just took a very easy shot and make it a 3-2 oh. situation. Oh. Giraffe going for the solo play me there. Pepe is already covering. Now they kind of have to hold. There's no need to go for the 4-2. This is already a win for the blue team if they stay patient and tidy. But still, Pepe going on offense. It's Giraffe this time being the one defending. But yeah, this is a lot of work for the orange team to recover the ball. Easy, easy clearance for Giraffe, I believe, here. Yeah, it takes it up the middle field. No one is there to actually connect with the ball. Demolition be there actually for Giraffe. But I believe that 2-1, yep, we're done. And the former champions are still gonna be the one going one oh ball still alive but yeah switch on share gets the first one we haven't mentioned i guess walker that it's gonna be a best of three final so we are yes, uh, again gonna play the next game with the same teams as switch on chairs versus rusty let me remind the repliers connected with us that are adrian sorin from autonomous reply germany plus Giuseppe Fagnani, Cluster Financial Services, that have already won the last edition uh, finals, versus the Rusty team made by Kieran Lynch from Canvas Reply UK, plus Luca Saldamarco from Blue Hybrid Italy. This is for the repliers watching us on Chick Norris Television. Hope you are supporting your teams. How was uh, the first game for you, Rene? You like it? Oh, very entertaining, yeah. I love it. Would you, would you say that um, in a 2v2 situation, it's more important to have a keeper hang back near the goal than in a 3 versus 3 situation? I mean, yeah, 3v3 almost requires you to have a, um, let's say, a um, goalkeeper, like dedicated goal constantly yeah. there, dedicated, yeah. In 2v2, yeah. you have to be able to switch it up in order for you to yeah. capitalize on this situation. Like, as yeah, you or can rebounds. Step it. But out of his goal to put on the perfect assist off the bar for Giraffe to put it in. So yeah, you, you cannot just play. I mean, you could get away with playing with the goalkeeper, but you're gonna end up missing a lot of opportunities. At the same time, oh, yeah. most of the 2v2 goals you see are like punishing a, an offense that didn't go through. Like an, off an offensive attempt that, that doesn't resolve in a goal. Pretty messy yeah. situation here, I think. Giraffe has the easy goal. He oh, could good save. Nice clearance here from Kiesel. It wasn't an easy one. With just the last pixel of the rooftop of his car, clearing the ball and managing to keep the situation on our 1 0 uh, score for the blue team, still the former champions. Already 1 0 for the best of three results. So. Orange team needs to step it up and win this one if they want to have a, another chance on game three. Kind of playing a, a really well-organized defense, the Orange team, and managing to capitalize on the many chances that Giraffe takes on offense, even though it should be maybe playing a little more carefully on defense. But as I said, 
Giraffe is kind of playing the role of the madman, going <laughs> left and right, <laughs> aggressive yeah. defense, while Pepe is the more disciplined one, the one that cares more about defending the goal. But it's perfectly fine. I mean, the two players are clearly uh, developing their own chemistry oh, this way. And as you can ball. see, worse just wow. fine. Pepe, yet again, bouncing it off the corner for Giraffe to capitalize on it. This is the formula that's been working for them for two editions now. Giraffe yeah. being the striker, Pepe being the goalkeeper and the assist man, doing a fantastic work defending. Also, Giraffe is being a lot of a lot, a lot more versatile than I remember. Kind of rotates to defense way more and it's way more um, dedicated to clearing the, the ball when the orange team gets on 2v1 situation. Good control from Giraffe, good clearance by Kizul. As I said, orange team is Counter. really playing well on defense and is also finding some good chances on offense here. Good clearance. Oh, that's unlucky for Team Orange. That's gonna be a goal. I believe that's gonna be a goal. Yep, it nope. is. I'm that always, is I'm always looking at the at the players' faces, and some are really yeah. having fun. Some are more <laughs> <laughs> less relaxed. Yeah. yeah, it's it's tough when you're so when, when you when you fall behind in Rocket League, you kind of have to make something happen. The other yeah. team otherwise can just run the clock and wait for you to make mistakes, and that's pretty much what's happening. Uh, Giraffe is getting the first goal through sheer mechanic super, su superiority and then they kind of hold on defense until the orange team makes a mistake but i mean it's the perfect strategy oh. as you see here almost another goal from pepe good shot just hits the bar oh, there's another chance for giraffe to bring it on oh. another shot onto the bar nice aerial here from giraffe he's playing magnificent tonight. oh yeah really you can tell he's uh, one of a kind when it comes to mechanical uh, talent. It, it's not that common to find a player that goes for so many aerials and has such control of their card in this situation. So props yeah. to Giraffe. He, he kind of showed off on the on the last tournament as well that he's kind of an MVP here in the Rocket League uh, tournaments. Sure, yeah. He's, he's already got four goals in two games again. And ah, there we go. Pepitania with the second. Pepe. Yeah, the yes. contest here from Giraffe kind of turning into an assist. As you can see, Pepe. It's actually being able to go on offense once they once they kind of uh, put themselves in an advantage. As you can see, Pepe is not a shy guy. He just goes in for another offensive player, and, yeah. and that's it's confidence, really tough right? to contain them. Yeah, that's confidence. Walk up with only a little, oh, a little under two minutes left to play. How likely is it in a in a random pickup game? I'd say it's possible to turn this around. Yeah, but of course, against a, a dedicated team working together so well. It's, very unlikely. Right? Yeah, it's it is especially. I mean, we're playing for an actual prize pool, so the the guys are willing to just uh, play some good old uh, two man defense and <laughs> yeah. not let any chances for the orange team. But I have to say, the orange team is doing what they can. The offense is not there. Maybe yep, Oof. they kind of have trouble setting up the offensive play. They kind of suffer in that phase when they have to prepare the offense, and Giraffe is constantly pressuring them. Pepe kind of evolving his own gameplay. I mean, Pepe is not just staying in the goal anymore. He, he kind of noticed that he could be the one pressuring the Orange team and helping out Giraffe to, I mean, resolve the offense of the Orange team before it even starts. And that's yeah. what bringing the success to the blue team. Exactly, uh, stay close, be able to bounce on rebounds when your teammate puts in a center ball or maybe misses a shot like Ooh. we've seen them hit the crossbar a few times. There we go. Oh. Another lucky clearance just that turns into a goal. keep on going. Yeah. yeah, when it rains, it pours. Yeah, exactly. When he plays with force in Rocket League, once you have to oh. like lose composure in order to find something on the offense, then of yeah. course it becomes easy for the defending team to just capitalize on your mistakes, as I said. And that's what the uh, blue team has been doing so well these past few uh, tournaments. I mean, they kind of get the advantage off immediately with very good mechanical team play, and then they kind of defend and capitalize on the enemies, uh, rushing the offense, making mistakes, and it's really tough for the team uh, that gets behind to, to kind of recover. Yeah. Do you think they might be taking too much risk right now? Or do you think they might be demoralized? Because in, in match number one, it was so close. It was 3-2. Yeah. They managed to score twice, and now it's suddenly 7-0. Yeah, I, it, I guess they kind of, I guess they kind of lost the composure that's necessary to still hold your ground when you're defending. If you endlessly yeah. try to put on some fight and go on offense, yeah. you never actually have time to communicate with your teammate to set up the offense to take turns at the clearing the ball defensively, and that's pretty much what happened. Rene, it's, like, it's like 
Sorry, Walker Renee. It's yeah, like sure. <laughs> Juventus versus Villarreal. You know, it's after the first <laughs> goal, after the first oh, goal, yeah. everything yeah, has guess. been done. <laughs> yeah, it's true. It's true. I, I think guess. there was um, a certain Dutch guy scoring, right? Arnaud Dan Juma. Uh, I think so. Yeah. He scored against Bayern as well. I yeah, really, yeah, exactly, I'm, exactly. I'm, so, I'm so impressed with this guy because he never played for a top three Dutch team, so we didn't really know him that well <laughs> until he went to Bournemouth, <laughs> which is, and even then, that's only second division in England. So it was a surprise. Yeah, yeah. When he went to Villarreal, he came out of nowhere for many. Whoa! We have oh, a goal from that. the orange team. Wow! Kind of a lucky Ooh. bounce here, midfield mm. from Kizil. Sets him up actually really well off yeah. the wall. Not an easy shot. And he kind of puts it behind the bar just slightly. Very good shot. That's yeah. some goals that in, in a 2 2 situation you, you have to make. You have to take those shots and you have to capitalize on your enemies kind of rotating fast and setting up the offense. Kind of a buzzer beater. Bad score for the second game. The one was much closer. I feel like the blue team. Yeah. Former champions and now, again, <laughs> renewed champions, and yeah. uh, we solved the riddle and knew what to do once the orange team was uh, setting up the offense so uh, chaotically. I would say they were they would play in a very good defense, very well organized. Two men behind the ball, covering the good passing lines and the shooting lines. But then for the orange team, it wasn't really that easy to organize the offense when both Pepe and Giraffe were pressuring them so much. So, congratulations to the Switch on Chair team made by Adrian Sori in uh, Autonomous Reply Germany and Giuseppe Fagnani Cluster Financial Services Italy. I see you're celebrating, right, guys? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Congratulations <laughs> uh, to our... Uh, to your uh, opponents. Opponents. Yeah, the yep. Rusty team made by, made by Kieran Lynch from Canvas Reply UK and Luca Saldamarco from Blue Reply Blue Hybrid uh, Italy team. Guys, has been tough, right? Tough. Uh, it's like an easy way to say it, <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> I, I feel like we were living up to the Rusty name a little bit in that uh, in that second. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's it. That's it. But Thank then, nonetheless, guys. I hope you had fun uh, in the world Good. tournament and, of course, in the finals as well. We'll be. Uh, we were very happy of having of having you together with us tonight. Uh, and again, uh, it, it has been a live event on Chick Norris Television. And anyhow, you deserve the prizes for the second team on the podium. And again, congratulations to the Switch on Chair team for winning again, back to back, second year in a row, the Rocket League Reply Gaming Tournament. Celebration Thank moment. You. Yeah! yeah. yeah. <laughs> and look, Enrico, they've completed a few in game challenges. We want to see him open the boxes. We want to see what comes out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. A little, bit, a little bit of on stream gambling. <laughs> 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 All right, so thanks for uh, uh, being together with us tonight and congratulations again. Uh, we'll see you around in the offices. Uh, and uh, uh, I mean, thank you guys for these new couple of casters, Rene and Walcott, together with us for the Rocket League Finals uh, ga Reply Gaming Tournament. It's already the time to move on. Uh, don't, don't move, because of course Walcott will be together with us again for the League of Legends Finals in uh, a few minutes. But now it's time for a surprise, a new thing in our Reply Gaming Tournament program. We uh, had, uh, during the last weeks, uh, a tournament dedicated to one of the most possibly the, the most famous video game ever, which is Tetris. One of the most famous, of course. I guess everyone in the world have played Tetris one time in their life, even my father, I guess. <laughs> and uh, right now, it's the time to see the finals of the first Reply Tetris tournament ever made. It's a physical event, because the two players, Marco Queirolo from Blue Reply and Cristian Pio Petrucci, from Pay Reply to Italian guys are here with us in Turin, in the same building where I am, uh, the Reply headquarters, uh, the brand new Reply headquarters in Turin. And uh, I guess together with us, connected together with us, uh, there are the two players and uh, the commentator of these Tetris finals, which is my friend Raffaele Aldrigo. Ciao, Raffaele, can you hear us? You can, but we can't hear you. Just give us a second. We are live. Yeah, don't worry. Don't worry. All good. It happens. You know, as on Teams or Zoom, somehow starts, the meeting starts on mute. 
and then everything happens and we are I mean I see you guys are happy in uh, one area of the office it's kind of the gaming area right just just show me the the place still you are on mute but I guess you can yeah you see beautiful you see this is the office actually a gaming area in the office the multifunctional room where players can of course relax in the meanwhile they are uh, they are working, of course. I mean, in the break moments, I see the technicians are working to unmute you guys. It happens. Don't worry. All good. We are live. It's uh, 10 minutes to 10 Central European solar time. Let's see if we can hear you. Otherwise, we will move back to uh, Walcott and Rene just to comment Did a bit. you hear me? Yes, no? we can right now. Ah, finally, we are here live in Lingotto yeah. for this Tetris night. Are you ready? I am before, already ready. <laughs> yeah, before, I would like to remind you to follow us on Tantami, so the gaming sphere and also the board game sphere, because, guys, we will have more of these events, so stay tuned. But no more words, because here we are two finalists that are ready for the final fight. So, sure. on my left, Marco, from, from Blue Reply, since uh, eight years. Uh, what do you do in, for your company? I'm working for uh, some financial services and uh, the record uh, motor finance uh, services. Are you ready to this challenge? Yes. Okay, and on my right, we have... Uh, Christian. Yeah, from? I'm in Blue Reply for uh, five years and uh, I'm a PM and senior consultant in uh, Petrolaria. How do wow. you feel about this challenge? Uh, it's um, a beautiful experience and I'm confident, but uh, uh, my, my friend is a very, very good player. Wow. Okay. okay. Raffaele, now, Raffaele, okay, well, let's present yourself too. What? Ah, yes, of course. I forgot about myself. No problem. I, no problem. Yeah. I'm here for that. Thank you, thank you very much for this occasion. I'm Rafael Aldrigo, I work in Cluster It. I'm also a speaker because I like to speak and to be involved in social stuff because I really love Tantami and Chick Norris television. So I'm really happy and proud to be with you tonight. We, as I said, we will have more events, so follow me. But no time for word because there is our challenge. So take your places. Man, you are born for this. You are really yeah. you're a great caster. What, what's happening there? So the players are sitting, yeah. right? They will use the standard Nest controller. If yeah. you Google on YouTube after this, you can watch the final Tetris World Championship. So this is our, like them, 100% real. Wow. You see the game that is Tetris for the NES, also with the controller, we have both. And yeah. these two players, we have a one-to-one -one challenge. So you will see on the left, uh, we will be um, Marco, and on the right uh, of the screen, Christian, and they will challenge. How it, it works is simply Tetris. So who makes more points win? Doesn't matter if one or the another lose. And I mean, the, if, yeah, the, yeah, so one will win and the other one? will lose. No, I mean that uh, if one of the two finish early, you will make a, a, a certain score. Each. Yeah. But the other one can continue and uh, can, uh, if he's uh, under this point, he can uh, re recover that, no? All right. Or yeah. enter the Guinness so. World Record. Yeah. Or As I say, you can be fast, but if you are fast, you made more points, but it's more risky. And yeah. you give more time for your opponent to think and maybe make more points you so you will see that it's a matter of strategy too right yeah yeah okay. i will comment and we'll explain when we will start uh, you'll be the main commenter you, you yeah okay okay so let's go when you want yeah player one we will start from level one player one press start please yes okay. there is a bit of delay okay player two when are you ready at when I say play, you will press start and we will begin. So, well, three, two, one, play, start. The two guys are kind of twins. We should have yeah, a, yeah. address something different. Okay, the match is started. They will have the same pieces coming. So, as I said, the match is on the same level. They will have exactly the same piece and they will decide what is the best strategy. Sure. So as I said, 
if you are slower, you make less point, but you will uh, risk less. Because if you fill the screen, it's game over. Yeah, yeah, true. If you're faster, you will make more points. So there are two main strategies in the stratis. Yeah, at the end, the you are yeah. always waiting for the long stick, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. That's the point. You, you give... Uh, you leave uh, one row on the left, uh, on, on the right, sure. uh, for the stick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or uh, you can use the TPs uh, to, to free the rows. So okay. the match is already going, as you see, that very hard match, because they, they had uh, some hard pieces, uh, as you can see. Uh, there there Marco, have been some mistakes yeah. in the middle. <laughs> yeah, Marco is not going uh, so well. Even uh, we, we know, as they said, uh, Christian, that this will be a tot one. Wow, so Christian no is, uh, is, in, is in advantage, but uh, you can see that some pieces can make the difference because if you make a Tetris that are four rows, you make a lot of points. Of course, the game is called Tetris. Yeah, true. Yeah, we know yeah. that. that. That's the, the, the name. And yeah, that, yeah. Uh, how many players we had in the tournament? In the tournament, we have registered 14 players, but okay. only two came to the finals. Yeah, the yeah, physical sure. uh, in, yeah. in touring. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And uh, uh, yeah, it's it seems. Uh, can can we frame again the two players? Yeah, it yeah. Uh, we see the the main strategy. Marco is the is going good with the strategy. I said the leaving a sink. It's called the sink. On, yeah. on the right is as a sink. While Christian is going much lower. In fact, it has less point, um, and, but it's going uh, good. He has two sinks. So if you have one sink, is is good. But if you have two sinks, you start to occur in problems, and you need to free the spaces. So yeah, it's sure. much in trouble. And also, Marco is on level two. So you, 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 when you advance in level, it's more faster. You get more points, much more difficult. But that's time to think. Raffaele, do the guys have any, uh, uh, I don't know, any past experience in Tetris tournaments? I don't know. We don't. And, uh, I haven't asked them, but we will. We will may ask. Uh, I think Marco uh, he played constantly Tetris, so he's a, a kind of fan. Would you like Tetris. to go behind the guys and playing the other uh, video games in the meanwhile they are playing? I, I can't, just, because just I'm plugged. Them. No, no, no <laughs> I won't be able to. Oh, you're plugged there, okay. No, I'm plugged with the headphones. The so headphones. I won't be able to, to hear you, but I would like to. I play it also with them to make them ready for this challenge. So, so it's a, it's I know they are ready. It's a training room. You can train yourself yeah, yeah. and then doing the, the real tournament there. Okay. Yeah, yeah. We in, in uh, Turin on this machine on their back. You can play this version of the Tetris in, uh, in the NES. So you, you basically can come to the office and have uh, a tournament on yourself. But we will have a prize. The first prize is on the board. It is a switch light right there. You can wow. see that. Okay, for the guys. Yeah, Ooh. yeah. Would it win? We win a fantastic switch light. Yes. We, we, I missed that, but uh, yeah, we will have the prize. Who will win? Who write knows? in the comment. Out, write in the comment, out the guys. Of the two twins here. Uh -huh. Who's going to win? But all, all the Tetris players yeah. are like, the, uh, are, are like uh, Marco and Christian. I guess. Uh, I, mean, dress, I guess, yeah. Dress in blue with beard uh, and the. Uh, yeah, yeah. I guess, yes. Uh, you can watch, as they say, the Tetris tournament final, finals. They're very, very fast. Uh, also, I see right now that also then they are very good. So, uh, really hard match. Uh, they are not saying a word. Uh, they are very concentrated because uh, it's a so. mind, uh, it's a puzzle. By, so, you have to present by mind it's difficult you have to be quick reflex they cannot pass the game so that they have to rush to get the best point we see that our the scores are equals the situation maybe it's less in favor for marco but he mm. is on a higher level level six marco on the left while christian is level three but the points are not, not the same, I would say, because, uh, you know, he has to arrive to level 6, you see, we have uh, 76,000 points for Marco, while for Christian, 
7,000 only, yeah. But it's on so, level 4. He can rush. So actually, uh, Marco has 10 times the points of Christian. Yeah, he does, but he's on, you know, on a higher level because he, he's rushing. While okay. Christian is more peaceful, more slowly. Okay, slow we but good. Time. Yeah, okay, yeah. okay, I know that. We will see. We, will we cannot see. say. We, we cannot say. Until no, no, the nothing game ends. is certain no. in life, and not even on Tetris. No, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. All right. Uh, okay, they are going on. I, may I watch them again just to check if they are sweating or you know? Because I, I, I mean, the other games are uh, Tetris is different. It's like yeah. a mind game. Are, the, yeah, are, it's a puzzle. Yeah. It's a yeah, an always growing puzzle. Like, and uh, uh, is there any any statistics or on uh, important tournaments worldwide, like the world champion of Tetris? How how many points? I don't remember them, but they go from level twelve, so they can be quite long, uh, half a, half an hour. But uh, it's not uh, the case uh, uh, for this one. They they no. are not world champions, but they will they surrender strong, before. Yeah. Okay, even because tomorrow no, they tomorrow strong, the guys yeah. have to work. Right. Ah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, yeah, we do <laughs> actually. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now we are the in in Ooh, a new level. One thousand points uh, for Marco while Christian is struggling with uh, twenty two thousand points. Uh, wow, a lot of points. Uh, I had ten. ten well, times how, how many more points are, are, are how many points, times. Raffaele? How many points you guess the guys will reach? Oh, I don't know because it's a tough match. Uh, Marco is already at level nine, so if we finish early, we can go to twenty, two, two thousand points uh, and more. So, a lot of points. Uh, level nine is not the maximum level; it's twelve. But huh, once you start to get to an high level, like level nine, you will need more points to advance of a level. So, it's faster, but it you go to the next level slower. Okay. So and how okay, about level 10? Level 10. How about you, Raffaele? Are you a Tetris player too? Yeah, yeah, I liked yeah. and also played also in the final not not uh, in the tournament because I'm the presenter. Yeah, I can so be. Very unfortunately, good. unfortunately. You are the uh, organizer, yeah. you can play. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I propose this activity because I like Tetris. In fact, I, I'm happy this activity sure. takes place. So I say thank you to all who organized this. Um, we want to make uh, more of this night, not only Tetris, uh, so stay tuned. Yep. And yeah, Tetris is a good game. I play in my spare time to How many, exercise your mind. What's, what's your best score? I don't remember. I don't play for the score. I play for the challenge and the, for the, for fun. the fun of playing. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 you can play Tetris online for free. So go on the Tetris website and you can challenge yourself or come in, in the office and challenge one of your colleagues. Wow. Yeah, that's better if you play against an, another one. So you are more prone to the challenge and ready to uh, prove your skills. Sure. The guys here yeah. seems to me very kind of uh, yeah, yeah, they are really good. Wired yeah. in. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see the before you you asked me if they were sweating, maybe a little bit because uh, here it's a bit hot, uh, even if it's night out there. But uh, yeah, they're sweating <laughs> a little bit. This is now the Tetris yeah. finals uh, into yeah. the Reply Gaming Tournament night. We are live. It's 10 o'clock in the night, Central European Solar Time, live on Chick Norris Television. Together with me, there is Mr. Rafael Aldrigo from Cluster Reply commenting the Tetris finals, where the two players, Marco Coirolo from Blue Reply and Cristian Pio Petrucci from Pay. And it's even hard to recognize who of the two here is Marco and which are the which is Christian. But then, nonetheless, the guys are playing the Tetris finals in order to be again the Tetris champion, of course, in the Reply Gaming tournaments. How is going, Raffaele? Ah, oh, wow! Marco is really fast, level fourteen. Wow! Really impressionating. What? I have no word. He's really, really good. While Christian is a bit uh, in trouble, I would say level nine. Not wow. a good situation, but uh, no. we can say that. Oh, oh. no! 
we have the final result, guys. And the winner is Marco. Congratulations. Congratulations he Marco, wants to play. play. He wants to play still or not? He can. He can. He can. He can do it. If you want. want to beat a world record, maybe a world record in reply. We have a Tetris champion here. I, li I like to interview the winner and of course yeah, he's yeah, hoping come, it. Come here, please. The winner is up on Marco and Christian. So, Marco, we, we, have, we will give you the prize in the moment, but first, tell, tell us what is this experience. It's a nice experience. I very like uh, the event. Okay, so I would like uh, the event to make for the future. Uh, the next event, I would like to play more, like uh, and, uh, I would like uh, the event to maybe play uh, another time. Of course, we, we will make more, but uh, it, it was, was hard. Was was your feeling? What was your strategy? Tell us about uh, this challenge in the test. So, to be honest, I played Tetris uh, a lot in my life, and uh, the strategy is uh, very simple. Just take uh, the scene in the right and uh, put the put it one. Yes, as I said, this is the strategy. But now, Christian, uh, tell us about this challenge. I'm a new player. This challenge is a very good idea, and I think that uh, there is a, uh, it is very important for uh, a reply to have uh, this uh, uh, event. Um, the strategy for Mark is simple, but uh, I'm a new player and uh, congratulations to Mark. But, but what about you? What, what are you thinking? Did you have hard times in this match? No, I think um, that uh, it's a new experience for me and uh, I'm uh, happy for, uh, for this. Okay, now we'll give the prize. Sure. And the certificate of first place to Marco. Is there a certification yeah, too? Yeah, yeah. Raffaele, you think about yeah. everything. Yeah, wow, you can you see. see. It's my it's my work. Very For good. The first well place, done. Tetris. You can place on your desk sure. and your colleague will invite you. Of course. Yeah, of yeah. Course. And also second place. For Christian. Another, yeah. another certification, yeah, yeah. of course. Of the course. Thank you. Into the camera. Okay, that's that's the best uh, yeah. of the Tetris tournament finals uh, hosted by Rafael Aldrigo from Cluster Reply. Thank you very much, man. Thank you for See your you. help. It's been great. Thank you to the two players and of course to the winning one. This was the Tetris finals, the Tetris tournament finals into the Reply Gaming tournaments, and uh, we can get back to the main room here. Thank you very much, guys. Enjoy, enjoy the night in the gaming area. Bye. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye. See you soon. We are, uh, yes, we are again back to the main studio where we are hosting the Reply Gaming Tournament Finals live on Chick Norris television as of my t-shirt and on Twitch as well. If you want to comment it together with us, just leave your comments. We are happy to welcome your question and of course to welcome your support to the different teams involved because we are about to start the last of our games for tonight. We are on time, perfectly on time on our agenda. The, and th I would like to say thanks to the World Control Room here together with me, which is organizing and splitting the signals and so on. And the backstage with the Reply Totem team, which has supported us, of course, in realizing the tournament. Again, if you'd like to no more about Reply Totem professional esports team. Just follow the guys on social media. They are present as Reply Totem on Instagram and Twitter and so on. Or the hashtag, which is Go Totem. Just follow them in their adventures in the esports industry. Uh, and right now, again, it's the time to welcome back Mr. Walcott, which is Hello. with me. Hi, man. Welcome back. Have you have you seen the Tetris Adventures? I actually did, yeah. <laughs> it's probably one of the first few few, few games you try as a sure. kid from the '90s. So I do confirm. Yeah, definitely, I, do confirm. I definitely remember that. <laughs> Hard to comment it actually, but then it's I don't know if it's an esports honestly, but then nonetheless. I guess so. Why not? I guess yeah. so. Yeah, exactly, exactly. But then it was very, very funny to see the two guys. Uh, uh, playing on Tetris, and uh, but then uh, here we are together in order to command the League of Legends finals, where we have uh, the two teams involved. I hope the guys are already 
connected. I'm happy to present to you winner of the last edition. Again, it's a back-to-back. -back. We have the Cisco Plan BUA BU8 team made by Lennart Stucky and Dennis Goingi from Cisco Plan Germany. Uh, together, I mean, versus the second team, their opponents, which are the Chrono Break team made by two colleagues in Data Reply UK, which are Alexandru Badoaya, hope I'm pronouncing it right, and Mr. Sashin Shah. Uh, I hope all of you guys are connected. I know that uh, uh, right now uh, the League of Legends uh, game requires a sort of delay, right? Uh, in order not to reveal. Uh, any strategy to the opponents in a matter of live streaming, right, Walcott? Well, yeah, of course. It, it really isn't the case for uh, all random, all mid, which is going to be the mode we're going to play tonight. Uh, it's going to be to be a 2v2. Uh, it's going to yeah. be a single match, no best of three. So we're going to play in the map called the Howling Abyss, where the RM mode takes place. Usually RM stands for all random, all mid, and it's a 5v5 between two teams that do not get to pick Pick their own champions they are totally okay. random but for this scenario we're gonna have the players actually pick the two champions they're gonna play so it's going to be a 2v2 with the draft picks they also get to ban some champions for the opposing team so it's actually a very interesting formula i already said about this i i really enjoy it i really enjoy it watching it casting it and i would definitely try to uh, play the tournament myself if only i could well, but, Walcott, uh, let, let, let's introduce the game a bit sure. for the completely the newbies you know okay. people that, who might know nothing about what are we expecting to watch which is league of legends i mean the fifa it's kind of easy football yeah then we have the rocket league which is football with cars let me say so uh it's perfectly fine as exactly as speech, yeah. Te tetris we know it League of Legends might be a bit tricky, right? Well, uh, traditional League of Legends, it's a 5v5 game where you have to build your own team of five champions to destroy the enemy Nexus or the so-called base. And okay. uh, of course, it, it, it's such a simple concept that becomes really difficult and intricate once you add to it to the equation like 200 different champions and all the possibilities of combinations that you have sure. uh, among those and the different items you can build on them. So you have champions that serve as tanks for the team, champions that serve as supports, uh, healers, champions that serve as damage dealers. So in this chance, we're gonna, in this mode, we're gonna have 2v2 situations. So uh, you might end up seeing two champions that really work well together, like one that supports the other in dealing damage. Uh, what we saw in the last tournament was uh, actually picking champions that are good on their own so that they individually could pressure the opponents. Because in this map, you're not gonna have the three traditional lanes, the mid, the top, and the bot lane. You're gonna have a single lane with a single row of towers and an inhibitor. What the inhibitor does, it uh, spawns minions that fight each other once they encounter each other. So once you destroy the enemy inhibitor, your minions will be more powerful and you will have a better chance to push the opposing enemies. So in this, in this mode, you get to um, win the game if you destroy the enemy tower, if I remember correctly. I'm, I'm going to check the rules real quick because there's different uh, versions of this mode, which is a made-up mode. There's not such mode in the game itself. You kind of have to uh, work around it by playing in the Howling Abyss and then having your players join the lobby in 2v2. And uh, the possible uh, win conditions would be uh, killing the enemies, but usually that's more of a one-on-one -on -one rule. So yeah. what we are going to do tonight, it's going to be uh, having a team actually destroy the Nexus, if I remember correctly. So, no, actually two towers. Oh, just, I just checked real quick. It's going to be two towers. Yeah, the Nexus is pretty much... Uh, um, it comes kind of automatically once you destroy two towers. It's already a very big advantage to destroy two towers because your minions are going to constantly push onto the enemy base. So what I'm looking here is uh, the composition that these two teams are going to make because it's yeah. the most maybe intricate and interesting uh, part of this mode. Because uh, as I said, you could be building a team where one champion supports the other. You could have a team where the two champions are very good in itself. Like what I uh, think um, Lennart and Dennis did last time, uh, if I remember correctly, they were playing solo lane champions that were really good on their own. And once they got uh, together, they actually were really good 
at synergizing as well. I remember yeah. maybe uh, a Yone pick, if I remember correctly, which is a very good champion so with a good wave clear, with good uh, let, chance let, let of Let me introduce them, Walcott, since we Ooh. are watching them right now, preparing for the game. I would like to say hi to Lennart and Dennis from Cisco hey, Plan Reply. Just wave your hands, yes. guys, if you want. Hello. Hi there. Hi. Hi, happy to see you. If I'm right, I don't know if it's Dennis or Leonard uh, already sitting on the chair that you won last time, right? They both uh, are. Yes. <laughs> yes both, both of you. Okay, so, yeah. both of you. Sorry, I, I, I wasn't able to see the, 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 the chair. Okay. Yeah, yeah, now, now better. Right, right, right. Okay, so I'm happy to see that the award that you deserved last time is already part of the equipment you are using. And I'm happy as well to welcome your opponents, uh, which are somehow, I guess, the underdogs right here, because, of course, yeah, they are trying to beat the champions, uh, which are Sashin and Alexandru from Data Reply UK. Hi, guys. How are you? Ready yeah, to... Good. All good. Okay, I see <laughs> that. Uh, uh, I mean, we are preparing for that. Uh, really just focused. Yeah, really focused, oh, and of course, <laughs> I guess so. I'm just watching the control room to check if everything is working properly. Yes, okay. So I'm expecting we are just waiting for the game to start, right? All right? Yeah, um, they're probably already thinking about what champions to pick, because as I said, the drafting aspect of the game, it's already really important towards the goal of winning. If you pick the wrong champions, your, your champions do not synergize really well or sure. are not uh, fit for this type of mode, you're going to have a quick loss and you're going to have uh, a game where you're not even able to play, actually. And that's sort of what we um, saw last time, where uh, Leonard and Dennis had a really good team, if I remember correctly, and the opponents were kind of experimenting with some picks that were not exactly really fit for the 2v2 mode, and Leonard and Dennis were really good to capitalize and pretty much give them no chance. But, so, but Walker, how, how, the, how yeah. does communication work in the team right now? Because they are apparently silent, right? They are not communicating one with the others or they are using a parallel, I don't know, Discord channel? Well, they, I expect them to start communicating really soon, maybe through Discord or TeamSpeak, yeah, because of course League of Legends is, being a team game requires a lot of uh, uh, communication, especially in a tight okay. spot where you're playing 2v2 and you're constantly matching two enemy champions. Of course, in League of Legends, you have the laning phase where you're pretty much on your own and you have to play against your opponent. You don't get to talk to anyone unless you're playing bot lane, which is a 2v2 situation with two supports and their two AD carries, so-called. And uh, in this situation, you have to really uh, synchronize with your teammate in order to make uh, fast attacks that are lethal for your opponents. Because in this game, once you get to uh, kill an opponent, it's 2v1. And in a 2v1 situation, you can do nothing. The the, the, the the guys at, at disadvantage can just wait for the uh, teammate to respawn. And in that window, in that exact fr time frame, the, opponent, the opposing team playing 2v1 is going to probably destroy one of your two towers. So sure. yeah, it's a really tight spot. You have to play really concentrated, really being communicative. And you have to remember that in um, the Howling Abyss, you cannot go back to the base to regenerate your champion. So you have to use some healing beacons that are at the side of the Howling Abyss. And if you're so behind that your opponent controls them, you never get to heal your champions. And you're put in a very tough situation where you cannot heal, you cannot really fight over the waves, and you pretty much are just losing the game right away. So it's a really snowball-y uh, game mode, I would say. It, it, it can end up really soon if things go sideways. The control room is telling me that uh, uh, all the moments are good, guys, to start the game. I know that it's up to the players to decide uh, when to start. We are ready, so from now oh. on, exactly, feel free to let it start. I know that, again, the strategy has to be prepared. And uh, as Walcott has said, there is some backstage movement, backstage communications that has to happen. Uh, and so again, good luck to the two teams of players preparing to face each other in the League of Legends Finals. The last game of our Reply Gaming Tournament live night. It's 10 and 19 minutes right now in Italy. Waiting the game to start. Uh, uh, we have uh, the Cisco Plan BU8 team winner of the last edition already. Uh, made by Lennart and Dennis from Cisco Plan Reply Germany versus the Chrono Break team from uh, uh, made uh, the, by two repliers from Data Reply UK, Sashin and Alexandru, which are about to start. I see one of the guys disappeared. 
oh, oh, okay, oh, happening. <laughs> hiding is, uh, yeah. Hiding himself, okay. Uh, they are, um, they are, uh, okay, started the strategy, if I'm right. I know, again, what... Yeah, please is. show us, by the way. Yeah, if, if the guys are already in Champion Select, please show uh, us. It's, uh, there's a lot to say about the Champion Select itself, so... Yeah, I know. I don't know if the guys are uh, already able to show us what's happening. I know that, mm -hmm. uh, I yeah. mean... Being there a delay, they're probably yeah, picking exactly, now where exactly. we're going to see in a moment. Oh, now we, we see are. something happening. All right. Okay, so I'm looking at the champion select and I already see Ari being picked and Tom Kench. Uh, that's a bit of a support and uh, carry situation there where Ari is a very good uh, uh, mage hybrid assassin where Tom Kench can serve as a support or a tank while the opposing team is going for Corky and Yasuo. And those are two mid laners that can really work together on their own. But once they're combined, they provide a lot of wave clear and a lot of damage. And it's going to be pretty tough to uh, actually uh, get into the position to dodge the Corky constant push and poke with the rockets, while at the same time being able to control the wave. It's, it's too far. Fun compositions, I have to say. Ari Tom Kench is the most interesting one because those two champs, I've I never had a chance to see them work together, actually. As I said, Ari is a mid laner. Tom Kench could be a top laner, a tank, or a support that still serves the tank role. So I really am curious to see how they're going to build their champions. Of course, you're going to need two things in this type of uh, 2v2 compositions. The first will be poke in order to harass your opponents and bring them low HP. And the other one would be wave clear in order to quickly clear the minions and get to push the opposing tower. So I think both compositions serve this purpose really well. All right, let's see the game uh, happening. I know that uh, it should be time to, to see something like the, the champion selection. Yes, uh, they're kind of loading into the game. Yeah, loading time may differ a bit, and then we're probably going to have a slight delay in order for the players to uh, not reveal each other. I mean, in uh, Howling Abyss, the map is not really wide, but there's still some bushes, some some spots that you can hide in. So if the players get to see in real time, they can use that to their advantage. And as you can see now, the timer is uh, uh, counting down. We have yeah. two minutes of delay. And uh, these two minutes are going to be used by the players to uh, actually play out the game without being seen by the opponents. Uh, yeah, theoretically, yeah, yeah, I, I believe the guys are going to be really sportsmanlike and are not going to watch. But I mean, the client itself forces you to have this delay, so we cannot play around it, unfortunately. We're just going to have to wait a little bit. But I have plenty of time to discuss these two compositions then. So uh, a good interaction that they have with Yasuo is the wind wall, which is a literal wall that Yasuo does by slashing the air with his sword and that could be what serves as the defensive mechanism from the team that has Corky and Yasuo and also Ari is a champion that works through skill shots which are spells on a, on a straight line that needs to connect to the opponents and Windwall blocks them so I kind of feel that in a way the Yasuo Corky team has a huge advantage here, especially because they scale really well. Those champions are really good at uh, uh, buying items, getting stronger and stronger over time, while Ari and Tom Kench are pretty much good straight away and can be really aggressive straight away. It's going to be really hard to harass and poke down Tom Kench because of his E passive. Once he gets dealt damage, you can just wait a little bit and recover those HPs or use the uh the kind of damage that he holds as a shield so it's it's really tanky unit it's really hard to bring down i believe that corky and yasuo are gonna have to be very patient farm up a bit and then find the right time to go to the base because as i said you cannot recall in howling abyss you cannot physically go to your base to buy items so you need to find a good moment to die and use the death as a respawn mechanism to go and buy items, actually. Wow. And that's one of the trickiest aspects of this mode. Even, even to die and disappear helps you in, in winning the match eventually. Yep. You have to find those room, those time frames to actually die, and possibly only against the enemy tower, so that the enemies don't get attributed any gold for the kill, but you still get to go to your base and buy items. That's the way to do this in this type of setup. 
All right, I see the, the, the timer ended. Yep. Uh, so I Let's guess, start. exactly, I guess that the, uh, uh, I mean, the delay we had to, uh, to wait for in order to start the game has ended somehow. And then uh, it's already time to comment what's happening, Walcott. Yep, I'm struggling a bit to see who is playing what actually. So if we can uh, go to a full screen, um, to a full screen scene, so I can actually see the nicknames. But I believe, if I remember correctly, uh, Dennis is a player that likes a lot of those mechanical champions like Irelia and Yasuo. So I believe that Leonard and Dennis are probably going to be playing Corky and Yasuo, while uh, it's going to be to the challenger Sashin and Alexandru to play Hari and Tom Kench. I'm really curious to see what they're going to build. So right away, we're going to have Hari with the Lost Chapter, a very good item in order to uh, build up a lot of mana and use those mana, use that mana to use spells and clear waves. While Tom Kench is immediately going for the Boots and for the Bami Cinder. It's going to provide him with uh, AoE damage around him and a little bit of tankiness. So uh, again, it, it's going to be a pretty tough matchup for uh, uh, Corky and Yasuo in the beginning because Arya and Tom Kench are really good at fighting right away. But Arya and Tom Kench need to push that lead and need to pressure the towers because uh, I want you guys to remember, the guys are following the stream, that the win condition for this format is going to be two towers. Not the whole thing, not kills, not 100 CS, which are, gonna, which are usually modes that you can see in 1v1s. For this 2v2, two towers are going to be the win condition. So, as you can see, Tam Kench is going to be posturing very aggressively against the opponents while Ari kind of farms up and clears the waves. While Corky and Yasuo, or the blue team, are going to be really defensive early on because they don't have much to fight for. Good use here for the wind wall, blocking a possible charm from Ari. So, it's actually Corky and Yasuo getting the best of this trade, but you have to look at uh, Tam Kench gray health that's going to be to regenerate over time so he's not really that scared of going far ahead and pressure the opponents with the tongue the huge tongue from tongue can poking in with the q good attempt at a charm as you can see Ari is using a lot of her spells but still the lost chapter makes it for a huge mana return mana regeneration here corky gets chunked down a bit by the Tom Kench. And as you can see, those um, green crosses at the side are used to heal your champions. And that's what you want to have control over in order to be able to regenerate a bit of HP and not have to die immediately. So it's a constant fight over this wave of minions. As you can see, Enrico, yep. these minions are fighting each other and you have to make it so that your minions are attacking the enemy tower, but it's a long way to go. It's like... Uh, playing tug of war you know yeah 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 it's, every, so it's, it's, it's even a bit concept. like it's even a bit like american football right i mean yeah, you, you it, are it literally earning yard by yard in order yeah. to reach the 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 uh, the touchdown uh, yep. zone and in the process your champions are gonna lose hp but you're gonna have to find room not only to clear the enemy minions but to actually connect with the enemy champions because if you put them in low hp they're not gonna be able to fight over the wave so yeah it's a really similar concept to tug of war but uh, at the moment as he said the champions are pretty much itemless good find here with the w from tom kench finding what's possibly the first blood and here it is yeah it's going to be a one for one actually so Corky is going to be able to buy items, and that's actually good news. Even though they gave up the first blood, Tom Kench is not a champion that scales really well with items, while Corky absolutely is. And as you can see, he's going to go for a Vampiric Scepter and Boots. And the Vampiric Scepter is going to give a lot of sustain to that Corky. He's going to be able to play really aggressive, poke the enemies, and some damage is being dealt to the tower now. As you uh, can see, finally, I'll I shoot. to connect. Question, Walcott, how should yeah. you organize the team? I mean, the two guys in the team, how should... The, I mean, it's one more defending and the other attacking? Or, yeah, or? it depends on the identity of the champion they drafted. So, as I okay. said, Tom Kench is the tank. He has to be frontline, the huge frog, as you can see from the red team. He's yep. in charge of being the, the, the one that takes damage and kind of push the wave and apply pressure. Yep. While the Ari, the, the fox um, enchantress, has to be the one dealing damage and connecting with crowd control's abilities. So, okay. for example, she shoots a heart that charms the opponent. As you can see, playing really aggressive from the Tom Kench, but Hardy is not in a great position to dish out a lot of damage. And here, probably, it's going to be the 
second that from Tomkins, you know, he has to flash and be defensive, but that's bad news from the red team because now Yasuo and Corky from the blue team are pretty healthy. They can push the wave freely. And also Corky has a huge chance of walking down, as you can see with the rockets. He just connected against the Ari and those two champions are pretty much 30% HP. They don't have much to do. good defensive W from Corky repositioning and still dealing damage to Tomkench. And that's gonna be probably the first huge chunk of damage to that tower, the most significant one since the start of this match. So great show from now on. Uh, I mean, it's going to be probably easier and easier for Corky and Yasuo as soon as they get chances to recall and collect items, as I said. So here, this situation is really dire for the red team. They don't have much HP. Oh, finally, the healing beacon respawns, but there's not an issue for Corky and Yasuo. They keep on pressuring. You have to remember that Yasuo doesn't have any mana. He's, he's a champion that doesn't need to have a secondary uh, resource to use his spells. That's like a, a huge part of the champion's identity. Him being a samurai and not actually using magic. So he's able to just use his sword and dish out a lot of damage here. The good use of the wind wall, exhausted, deployed on the Ari doesn't connect with the charm, so it's going to be two versus one. And as I said here, it's going to be a situation where Tom Kench is going to lose a lot of experience and gold from that wave. Good healing beacon from Corky and Yasuo. They're still able to apply a lot of pressure. I see the guys celebrating. Exactly. That might be a little spoiler. So <laughs> I know that. <laughs> uh, it's, uh, let's pretend we didn't see that. Yeah, it's yeah, still yeah. a pretty tough fight. I mean... From this point, I have to be honest, I, I definitely have to admit there's a huge advantage for the blue team, but it's not over at all. As you can see, Tomcatch might be behind, but he still has a huge potential to be the tank for that Ari. It's tough for that Ari to be able to deal damage though, because it's so mobile. Look at Yasuo forcing the defensive flash, and now Tomcatch still going in and getting a good ult off of Tomcatch. He still cannot connect with the Yasuo. Look at how mobile that champion is. And he still gets the kills. And he's alive somehow. As long as Corky can dish out some damage to the Ari, they can be two versus zero. Double kill here for the Corky. And that's gonna be a one versus zero situation. Now Corky can do exactly what I said. He can clear the wave. And after a few seconds, he can die to the tower. The credit for the kill will not be given to the enemies. And he can recall and buy items. Here, of course, he has to dish out some damage to the tower, the demolish procs, and he gets executed by the tower. So he gets to recall freely without giving any money to the opponents. Good stuff here. Very good stuff. Corky now gets to buy some items. I guess he can maybe finish up his uh, Ravenous Hydra. I think he can build. Ravenous Hydra is a very good item because it gives you wave clear. It uh, transforms your auto attacks in attacks with a small AoE around those. And it's usually a core item in uh, actually in competitive Corky builds. He builds AP and AD items alike because he dishes out damage of uh, both types. So, I guess it's really tough from now on for Haria Tamkens. Corky goes in with the package and it's immediately a combination with the Yasuo ult, the Steel Tempest, another knockup, another kill for the blue team. And it's going to be so difficult now for the Tamkens to defend. It's probably going to be the first tower. And that also you have to think that the longer the game goes, the longer the respawn timers are. So it's going to take yeah. a lot of time now for the Ari to come back and Tomcatch gets brought down when he tries oh. to defend the tower solo. And it's going to be probably game here because look at the damage they can dish to the tower. You have to remember the second tower means it's over. Ari gets back and clears the wave on a desperate attempt to keep the game alive, but Kork and Yasuo are unstoppable <laughs> right now. Look at them dancing in the middle of the lane. They know they can deal the killing blow right here, right now. It's going to be probably impossible from this Ari. He chumps the Corky, but it's too late. Kork and Yasuo getting more kills, but the game is done. They're already celebrating. They can actually close the game right here. The second tower has been demolished and blue team Reconfirms themselves as the winner. I think it's wow. Dennis and Leonard, and Leonard. Yeah. Congratulations, guys! It seems like yes, we have a, a Victoria uh, celebration moment, uh, and I guess we have to 
uh, again, celebrate the back-to-back -back winners of the League of Legends finals. If I'm right, Leonard and Dennis from the Cisco Plan BUA team uh, has confirmed themselves as winners, right, guys? I see you. Yeah. Yes. Uh, thanks a lot, Enrico. <laughs> exactly. No, thanks yes, to you. Uh, thank you. Thanks to you for uh, being together with us uh, uh, for another night, and I, I would say for another winning night. Nonetheless, uh, I would say thanks uh, to uh, Sashin and Alexandru from Data Reply UK. Guys, how has it been? Yeah, they played well. They played the well. Is, <laughs> the combo is really quirky also. It's a pretty good combo. Okay, okay. Is it been your first time in a professional, semi-professional League of Legends tournament? Yep, for me, yeah. Okay. And so, I mean, anyhow, you, you, you rank second in the podium, so I guess you might be happy, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah, also, okay. also, they tried a pretty cool combination with the Aryan Thumbkench. Uh, it's not something I, I saw coming, so... Uh, is this the composition you played for the whole tournament, Harry and Tumkench? I think so. Not not that many words. <laughs> okay, okay, it's fine. Yeah. I mean, I, I, the moment I saw the moment I saw Yasuo, I was pretty sure he was going to be a champion from uh, Irelia Sama. I mean, the the nickname itself shows that he likes mechanical champions and he likes to play these uh, insanely technical. Um, melee carries, but the combination with the quirky package and knocks up, uh, it's been really great. That that duo had everything, the wave clear, the damage, the mobility, but yeah, I, I got to give it to the second place, to the runner-ups. The, the, the Ari Tamkens was a very good idea, but uh, there's it was a desperate situation where they needed to get a good advantage early on, otherwise Korki and Yasuo would outscale them and win pretty easily later on. And so, congratulations to the winning team of the League of Legends Finals. Again, the Cisco Plan BU8 team made by Leonard and Dennis from Cisco Plan Reply DA. And thank you very much to the two colleagues from Data Reply UK for being together with us in these finals who have officially concluded the program of the Reply Gaming Tournament Finals for tonight. Thank you very much to Walcott as well. Thank for you guys for having me again. It's always a pleasure. Please call me again, especially if you still host this event. I love this to be true. Sure, Legends. sure. We will in future and we are happy to confirm the team. So thank you very much for your availability. Thank you, guys. Good luck for uh, everything in the esports industry, Walcott. And so see you soon. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> see you soon, hopefully. Thank Bye. you very much to you. And of course, thank you very much to Mr. René Trer from, uh, I mean, from Holland, which have been together with us in order to comment uh, the FIFA tournament. And not only, even because they've been together for the Rocket League. This is it for the Reply Gaming Tournament Finals, part of the Chick Week, the Chick Norris Television Week, the, the festival, the first festival dedicated to our internal video platforms, Chick Norris Television. The program will continue in the next days, so stay tuned on chicknorristv.reply.com and of course on Tantami. Thank you very much for the, to the people who have watched us on Twitch as well. Thank you very much and keep following us. I would like to say thanks to the World Control Room here together with me. Well done, guys. As always, I mean, to be live with so many stuff happening, it's not that easy, but we are happy to do it for the community, together with the community. And I would like to say thanks, of course, to the people uh, about the Tetris tournament, Raffaele and all the players. And of course, to the World Reply Totem team who have collaborated with us. Without you guys, it won't be possible to organize such an event. This is it for the third edition of the Reply Gaming Tournament. We'll be back, of course, for another edition in the near future. Keep following Chick Norris Television. And guys, see you next for the other adventures. Goodbye, everybody. See you on Chick Norris TV. Ciao.